Good evening and welcome to RCTV's coverage of election 2015 here on April 7, 2015, our local election here in Reading. We're very excited to be here tonight. My name is Kevin Vent and I will be hosting your co our coverage of the election along with my co-host here, Katie Robertson. Katie Hi. Robertson, nice to have you here tonight, Katie. And uh, we're very excited to be here and to bring the results of this election to you. As we talk about the election, a lot of people around town have been asking me, well, what are we actually voting on tonight? And we do have a couple of uh, contested races in our local election. Katie, we have one of them for the Board of Selectmen. Yes, uh, for the Board of Selectmen today, there are two candidates, Barry Berman and David Terniello for one seat. So that's one of the contested elections tonight. The other is school committee. That's right. So those uh, people who are running for the, the uh, one seat for the Board of Selectmen are running for a one-year seat. There's also an uncontested uh, race for three-year seat for Board of Selectmen. As you mentioned, we have a contested race for a one-year seat on the school committee mm. also. And many of you may have seen the forum uh, that we did the other yes. night as well uh, for that. So th those are two contested races uh, that we have going on. We also have an uncontested race for school committee as well for three-year seats on the school committee. We are voting for a moderator. Correct. Uh, we're voting for library board. We're voting for board of assessors. Mm -hmm. We're voting for any number of, of different uh, things going on on our ballot tonight. Uh, I think there's also uh, a Reading Light Board we're voting on tonight. And a and ballot a charter question. And, and, and a yes. ballot question as well. So also of things that are happening uh, tonight. There are actually three candidates for that one-year seat in that contested race for school committee tonight as well. And as we saw on the slide that just came up a second ago, uh, we had uh, Steve Zessis, who was, who, was, who was running, and Nancy Doctor, and uh, Joyce... Um, Julianne Joyce. Ju Julianne <laughs> Joyce. Julianne Joyce. Her sign is actually right behind me <laughs> on the wall. Julianne Joyce. And uh, so uh, th that's really what's going on here tonight. Yeah, so lot, lots of night. things happening. Yeah. Um, however, there has been a snag yes. today. <laughs> Share with us about the snag. As can happen in local politics, there has been an issue today. Uh, two of the precincts ballot counters are now out of commission. So precincts two and eight no longer have ballot counters. They now have to be counted by hand. So how that will work is each precinct, two and eight, will have three people involved in counting the ballots. They'll have a reader, a counter, and an observer, and then there will also be an accompanying police officer. So the reader will read the ballot, the counter will mark where the candidates have been voted for, and the observer will make sure that both of those, uh, those jobs have been completed correctly, and then the police officer uh, will be standing by as well. Also to arrest any criminals. That well, you know, right. just no, in I case. Think it, 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 obviously, it's, that's happening to, uh, to, make, to ensure the process is, is, is accurate Correct. and all that kind of thing, and that's a very important thing. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. That's something that we haven't really had here in Reading in the past is, is that kind of excitement. I don't think we're going to have the hanging chads or anything like that. We don't poke <laughs> holes in our ballots. For those of you who voted today, you know you're filling in the circles, so hopefully it'll be a little easier for yes. those human counters to count as opposed to the machines. But uh, it was kind of, you know, strange things up a little bit today. Yeah, and it will uh, it will change our broadcast a little bit. So we'll be here yeah. until the ballots have been counted. Though you should keep in mind that because they'll be counted by hand, there could be recounts in the future, and so we may not have. Uh, a total uh, decision on those ballots this evening. Particularly if any of the races are close, mm. uh, there's a possibility of that happening. And so we'll have to see what happens. We yeah. don't know. You know, typically on, on an election night like this with a local election, we have the results pretty quickly um, after the polls close at 8 o'clock. But, you know, because of the broken machines and the hand counting of ballots, it may take a little longer. I know when I was uh, at the polling place at 4 o'clock, or about 4.30 actually, 172, I was the 172nd ballot in my precinct. Now, my precinct isn't one of the two that's going to have the hand um, counting have to be done. But if it's a similar rate, you know, figuring another couple of hours of voting, there's probably, you know, 200, 250, 300 ballots in each precinct maybe that have to be counted by hand. Sure. I, I am in precinct two, which okay. is one of the contested uh, precincts. I was ballot eight this morning, <laughs> but I was there before work. So that was at eight this morning. But right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would assume that those ballots have to be recounted, um, even those that got there before the two o'clock I believe is when the machines went down. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, got, I found out about it about 3 o'clock, 3.30, somewhere okay. in there. So it obviously was before that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we always talk about when it comes to elections is, of course, talking about voter turnout. We tend to obsess on this, and yet on the other hand, 
uh, there's a good reason for obsessing on it because really, you know, we are asking people to, to give their opinion on these issues and, and it's important for them to, to kind of let us know what they think. And I know as of about 10 o'clock this morning, which is very early, there was only about, you know, 2% or so voter turnout. So it'll be interesting to see how high that voter turnout actually comes. Yeah. And it is an important election. There are, there are plenty of important uh, issues being discussed. Um, the budget, uh, you know, dis issues with schools and everything. So it would be uh, great to see a high voter tur turnout. Yeah, and as anyone who watched the forums here on RCTV mm -hmm. saw, you know, these candidates are passionate about what they, they want to do for our town and how they want to serve us. And so in some ways it would be nice if people came out and supported them. But hopefully, you know, hopefully there was a run on it. I can see here we're looking at a live shot actually right now of the field house. And uh, we can see actually that's the town clerk there in the yellow shirt and they're preparing to count the ballots and, and they're getting the final counts in. Each precinct is bringing the, the results from their machines and they, what they typically do is hang those things up. You know, and then the candidates can see, and then the, the usually tomorrow morning is when the clerk will give the official counts, even sure. though we'll have the unofficial counts for most of the precincts tonight. Um, so we can see they're beginning to get some of that work done now, basically as soon as the polls closed here at 8 o'clock. Um, so hopefully we'll get some numbers soon and we can share them with you. Uh, as you mentioned on the ballot, we did have a ballot question, um, and that was about the Reading Home Rule Charter, and basically seeking to change some things on the Reading, Reading Home Rule Charter. And we actually, here at RCTV, did a video that kind of shares a little bit about why we're wanting to do that or why people are wanting to do that and, and what those changes are going to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at why um, the decision was made to put this ballot question on the ballot today. And it uh, looks like we have our video now. Okay, oh, we're back with us again. All right, very good. Okay, well, anyway, um, so uh, I guess we'll come to that video a little later yes. on. But it is, it is kind of an important thing that, the, that really a, a committee was put together and of, of quite a number of people to work on this ballot question uh, that came up today and, and revised the Reading Home Rule Charter. For those people who aren't aware of what the Reading Home Rule Charter is, that is really the constitution of the town. It, it really describes what boards and committees there are, who's elected, how they're elected, and kind of how the town runs itself. And it's been about 30 years since there was any kind of change in that. And, and uh, of course, society has changed in those <laughs> yes. 30 years quite a little bit. So, so uh, a group was put together based because of a, a motion at town meeting to, to look at what's going on and look at, um, you know, maybe some changes ought to be made. And, and I think the most significant change that was made was a switch in the Board of Assessors. Correct. Uh, that the Board of Assessors has been an elected position up till tonight, till today, and <laughs> including, inclu today. Inc including today, um, and, uh, but since then, uh, the Board of Assessors, uh, they're going to be changing how they're doing that. So I think we have that video now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Back in 1986, our first home rule charter went into effect, and we reviewed it approximately 10 years ago, made a few minor changes. Uh, about a year and a half ago, one of our town meeting members uh, offered an instructional motion. We hadn't looked at the charter in many years, and so it was really time to take a look-see and see if anything needed to be refreshed, see what things in town had changed, such that the charter could be a living document. The instructional motion carried and it created a committee that would be appointed by the moderator and ideally we'd have at least one member from each precinct. We came pretty close to that. We had 15 volunteers. As moderator I felt that anybody that was interested in, uh, in 
working on this should be on the committee. Being a town meeting member for now, I believe I'm coming up in 21 years, it, I approached the moderator and said I'd be interested in doing this. As a relatively new town meeting member, uh, I decided that this was an opportunity to give back to the town and to participate in the, uh, in the practice uh, on a personal level. As moderator, I had a, a little bit of a problem where I would also be moderating the town meeting when this went to that body for a vote. So early on, I decided that I would treat myself not so much the chairman of this committee, but as its moderator. And so out, out of that, that group that the committee was formed, it, um, include, including uh, at least several members who were involved in the original charter. It worked very well. We had a lot of experience. We had a town meeting member that's been there for 47 years. We had two original members from the original charter committee back in the 1980s. And we had a couple of people that were on the review committee 10 years ago. We had two public hearings, and as the usual in public hearings, uh, one person showed up at one, and I think two people showed up for the other. Uh, however, we did offer public hearings for anybody that wanted to come. Part of it, I think, is just the charter being a, such a high-level document. I don't think people see it or interact with it as much as, say, they do with zoning or the bylaw, um, though it is important because it's really the, the foundation on which everything else of the town government is built. Probably the best thing that we had was when we would share copies of the document with various boards, when we'd review them, sometimes we'd have folks come in and talk to us about what, uh, what they were doing so that we could understand how best to either change the, the charter to, to suit their needs or to leave it alone because it, it already did suit their needs. I think the only controversy that came about was the um, assessors being uh, appointed instead of elected. Over the last few years we've discussed making it an appointed position by the Board of Selectmen instead. We solicited feedback from the current Board of Assessors and other members of town government and determined that with the really spe specific skill set that's required that we thought it would be better rather than have an election and choose the most popular candidate to have uh, our town leaders be involved in evaluating who the best candidate might be and making that choice. So what will happen if the charter passes is that the Board of Selectmen would appoint the assessors now, who then, who then are responsible for keeping the records of property values and delivering in a timely fashion that information to the selectmen so they can set the tax rates. If you go back in history, as I often do, at one time they were appointed by the Board of Selectmen. So I think uh, it's come back to being appointed by the Board of Selectmen. So th what goes around comes around. Nothing, nothing changes the date and the calendar. There are a lot of other changes that we put in that were just organizational and wording changes, which we felt made the document easier to use. Looked at kind of what stood out. For example, um, at, at the end of the chart, there was a whole section on how the transition would work in 1984 from the old, old government to the new Home Rule Charter, uh, which clear, clearly was no longer applicable. We get comfortable with what we have. Oh, it works, we know how to use it, and the effort to make a change, as, as we've seen from this you know, year plus long effort, and the need to go to the legislature for part of it, the need to go to the voters for part of it, there's a, a, it's very easy to become complacent and not look at the document does it, does it reflect the realities of current state law? Does it reflect the realities of how the business, how the town really runs? We not only looked at the sections that we decided to change, we looked closely at the sections that we decided not to change. And in the process with everyone talking about what interested them, how they understood what the, what the charter actually said, we all learned more about certain key provisions of the document that maybe we didn't even understand beforehand. And if we understand it better, we can help communicate that to uh, everyone else as well. In the end, I think we came out with a damn good uh, charter. One of the great things of going through this process was that all of the committee members got to have one-on-one -on -one contact with uh, numerous town officials. 
Everything that we did was reviewed by town council. We had many meetings where the town manager sat in. The town clerk was uh, an active participant in helping us with the document, letting us know uh, things that we could and could not do. It went through the uh, town meeting by a very sizable vote. It was nearly unanimous. Uh, the process is that it now has to go on the ballot for the entire voting population to vote on. That's what we'll be voting on at this election day. Well, I know that everyone should have received a copy in the mail from the town explaining uh, uh, that they're going to have to vote on the charter changes and giving them a copy of the charter. Uh, I hope that everyone takes a look-see and, and even if you just skim it, you get a flavor for what kinds of things you know, were done. Uh, as per state law, every household received a copy of the, the, the charter with its proposed changes. And you've probably received that already in the mail, and we hope you have a chance to take a look at that. Welcome back to RCTV's 2015 local election coverage. That was a great spot about the charter, which is on the ballot today. Um, we're looking at a live look at the field house, where the polls have closed about 15 to 20 minutes ago, uh, where they're currently counting the votes and uh, trying to get us a conclusion on tonight's election. Can you talk a little bit more about what the next steps for the charter are? Yeah, Kevin? I mean, I thought the video really explained kind of how we got to this point really well. And I think from, from that point, they not only sent it to the voters of, of the people of Reading after it passed town meeting, but they also sent it to the state legislature, mm -hmm. where the Senate and the House of Representatives down in Boston had to vote on that. And the process that happened there was that the House voted on it and passed a version of the, of the charter as was sent to them by the town. That went to the state Senate. The state Senate passed a slightly different version where they made a couple of, of changes um, and, and uh, then they sent that back to the House. <laughs> and so I think it passed the state Senate on last Thursday, was sent back to the House on, uh, over the weekend and passed on Monday. So that means that if the voters were to uh, approve that tonight, then uh, it would, it's already been approved by the state and it's been you know, put together with state law and all that kind of stuff. And so it should you know, be passing, you know, from that point. So that's kind of how, where we've come and where we're going and all of that. So we should be in good shape uh, from there. So, you know, while we've been working on this election here, we also have been um, having several forums for yes, candidates also. Yes, the forums um, that we've had for the selectmen and also for the school committee. Uh, there was a selectman forum last week that talked, about, that talked to Barry Berman and David Traniello uh, with Kevin Vent as the host. And we also had a school committee forum with the three uh, uh, school committee uh, candidates, uh, also with Kevin Vent here at RCTV. Those were uh, well received and um, were brought out to the, the, the RCTV viewing community so that they could uh, have a good idea of what the important issues are for the school committee and for the selectmen. Um, yeah, we also hosted a couple of uh, uh, call them, you know, uh, fireside chats mm. with uh, members of the uh, boards that were running but were not actually uh, opposed in this election. So I sat down uh, with the one candidate running for the three-year seat for the selectmen, uh, John Arena, <laughs> and uh, we just kind of had a chat and we talked about issues that are important to him, important to the town, and that kind of thing. I also sat down uh, with a kind of a two-on-one -on -one with Gary Nyan and uh, with uh, Elaine Webb, who are running unopposed for the school committee three-year seats. And same kind of thing, kind of talked about their version of what is the state of our schools and uh, what they hope to see coming in the future and, and all of those types of things. So we, we tried to give the voters here at RCTV, we tried to give the voters a real snapshot of what they're voting for and who they're voting for and why they're voting and, and all that kind of thing. And so we had uh, a lot of that going on in, in, in the last several weeks. Um, we continue to look here at the live feed from the uh, field house down on Oakland Road at Reading Memorial High School, and we see that several precincts have been posted, and we're waiting to see uh, what some of these results are going to be. Yes, uh, looks like we have a few more precincts that might have posted numbers by this point, so uh, hopefully we'll be getting some preliminary information uh, soon from the field house. Um, again, the precincts from t precincts two and eight have uh, broken machines, counter machines. So those uh, machines in precincts two and eight have not been counting votes. 
those votes will be counted by hand. That will work by having uh, three members of the voting committees, uh, a reader, a counter, and an observer who will work on counting the votes by hand. Uh, and then those, those results will get to us as soon as we have them. Kind of here as we see this shot, we see several of our crack staff, it looks like, actually counting things up and <laughs> yeah. uh, get, get, hopefully getting us some results here pretty soon. Yeah. I love the big RCTV you know, uh, sweater that he's wearing there. That's outstanding. And so uh, that's a process. It's happening <laughs> continually. Of course, you know, none of those results will be official until tomorrow morning when uh, the uh, town clerk actually uh, gives us those results officially. So, But we will be bringing some unofficial results hopefully pretty soon here on RCTV. You know, the candidate forums are really interesting because I really found it's a, really, it's a great way to really learn something about the candidates. Oftentimes, when someone is running for town office for the first time, we don't necessarily know who they are. And so, at least for me, I found that uh, it was really helpful for me personally determining who I was going to vote for because I really had a chance to get a sense of who they were. I don't know how... You... I agree. I found it enormously helpful, yeah. Um, I really got to understand who they were and what they really stood for by mm -hmm. some of the questions that were asked, uh, particularly ones about priorities in the future, um, things that they would highlight as being the most important aspects of the job or the, career, uh, or the, the position. Um, so I thought that that was, that was very helpful. Um, it also, there were also uh, kind of interview spots with individual, uh, individual candidates up on RCTV on YouTube. Uh, so that was very helpful to also hear their uh, kind of opening statement and positions on, on several, several spots. Yeah, not only that, but, you know, I always think of those forums as kind of the, uh, a rite of passage for Reading candidates. It's something <laughs> they kind of do. They come in and they, and they get to, to share what they have. And they, you know, they're very nervous when they start off, but they realize uh, as we go along, we're not here to hurt them or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. We're really here to help them uh, get their message to the people. One of the other rites of passage for Reading candidates really is going and holding signs. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had down a lot of... Down at the field Down house. at the field house all day. <laughs> Most of them are down there for big chunks of the day mm -hmm. and their supporters are there as well and I know our Phil Rushworth was down there today and, and had a chat with some of them and so uh, we're hoping that we have that video ready to go <laughs> and uh, uh, we uh, took the opportunity to take uh, a, a gander at what was going on down there earlier today so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, and listen to what some of the candidates had to say today while they were holding signs in that rite of passage for uh, running elections. Um, final thoughts people here the people driving by, beeping, waving, everybody walking by, the people holding signs for all of the different candidates. Everyone is very supportive of each other and just uh, everybody appreciates the process and the time that's gone in from everyone. So I think I just have a good feeling about it. Um, I don't know anything about the numbers or how that's all working, but um, I'm very happy to be standing here today. I'm ho I hope I'm victorious in the end, but if not, um, uh, I'm going to continue, you know, trying to, to help the community as much as I can, you know, no matter what seat I hold. Uh, just hoping that uh, everything goes well and I'm grateful for everybody who's come out and voted and appreciate the sport. I just think it's been, it's been a great process. Um, you know, we have two great candidates. You know, we, we might have some differing visions of the town, but we put our message out there. It's been civil. It's been great. Um, you know, I just, if anybody's going to see this before 8 o'clock, I just encourage you, no matter what you do, just come out. Just come out and vote. That's really the most important thing for the town. Uh, I'm excited to find out what the conclusion is. Um, you know, it's been a long, well, short but arduous run, and, um, you know, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. Um, and we're, you know, cautiously optimistic that things will go our way. Uh, I think it's, it's a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. And, you know, looking forward to the opportunity to sort of be able to serve and give back and, again, appreciate everyone's help and support and get out there and speak your piece. My family has been extremely supportive. My girls are kind of funny about it. They're in fourth and seventh grade, so they have a different perspective. But my husband has been reaching out to his friends in the community through, you know, it, through hockey and different different avenues, and everybody passing out signs. And he's been right there, you know, with them. So it's they've been very, very good. Yeah, they've been great. Uh, I think it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be to sort of get to this point. But I think um, I've also been enjoyed sort of all the different points of view and everybody who's come out and sort of approached me just to say, hey, glad you're stepping forward and expressing their point of view and engaging people in a discussion. Uh, it's been a real learning experience for me and uh, it's been a lot of hard work but a lot of rewarding work. Uh, I've got to talk to thousands, literally, of Reading residents to find out what's important to them, uh, what's important to them in a candidate. Um, 
and today's the day. So I'm hoping that they'll all turn out and uh, vote for their candidate. It's really important. I still can't get over the fact that I drive around town and I see my name on people's lawns. To me, that's such a foreign concept. But, you know, I want to thank all the people who, um, who I reached out to who are helping. Uh, they've been great. The support, the camaraderie, you know, the inspiration that they gave me, it's just been, it's been fantastic. Um, the one thing I would, um, I would encourage anybody who's going to run for town-wide office, it's harder than, it's harder than it looks. Um, you know, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of commitment. You have to ask a lot of people. You shouldn't take anything for granted just because you know somebody. Don't assume they're going to vote for you. You have to go out and ask people one by one for their support. And it's it's hard work, but it's it's fulfilling. All politics is local. All politics is local. This is the this is this is the greatest thing. I mean, you know, you pick up the paper today, you find out that you know Washington's in stalemate. Boston is losing money. You look in here. Every dollar that we spend goes into the town. So, you know, it's a great thing. Decisions are made by your neighbors, people who you trust. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's a great thing. And so, um, you know, if you're going to be involved in any type of government, local government is the best thing to be involved in. Okay, well, we are back here with election coverage live on RCTV here on April 7th. 2015, the local election where we have several contested seats, uh, particularly for the Board of Selectmen as well as for the Reading School Committee. And uh, those votes are being counted right now, uh, the, both by the electronic means and by the <laughs> hand means, um, as we've been watching some of our footage from the Fieldhouse come through right there. And it's really interesting to, to, to hear the candidates talk as they're holding the signs, as, as I called it, that rite of passage, yes. <laughs> and kind of how they feel about that. I, I always kind of wish it's a cold day for them. No, I don't know. I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> I think it always has been. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you can tell they come in and they're all sunburned and even if, on a cloudy day. Windburn. Windburn. Yeah. And, and, but, uh, but, you know, I really am, am uh, always impressed with people who are willing to kind of put themselves out there and take the chance to run for an elected office and really appreciate all the candidates who have run and who have uh, been seeking to serve us in that way because that's really what they're doing is, that, is they're seeking to serve us. Um, so as we look here in kind of our split screen going on, several precincts have been posted. The votes are being counted. We're going to take a short break here on RCTV and kind of gather our breath a little bit. <laughs> and I think maybe we have some results coming in pretty soon as we're, as we're uh, getting ready for, uh, to find out who's going to be representing us on the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, and other places. My name is Kevin Vent. This is Katie Robertson. You've been watching RCTV's election. We'll be back in just a moment. to Malicious Simplicity, I'm Anna Trokakis. On the menu today, we have Roman-style lamb with artichokes, barley pilaf, and thick and creamy yogurt-filled crepes. So let's get started. This is my first production, and uh, we like doing it. We really do. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. I enjoy the creativity, because it's an artistic presentation, and we get to have good food and share it with the community. I love the, the people here, uh, getting the camaraderie about the, the editing and the taping, and it's great. It's wonderful. I definitely would encourage others to get involved. It's a, it's a great experience. The, the staff and, and everyone here has really been very supportive. For more information about RCTV, visit us on the web at www.rctv.org. We are Troop 65124, and you're watching RCTV, a rainbow! RCTV Studios offers quality summer programs for kids and teens. These programs are ideal for the budding actors and actresses of the world, as well as the future directors, sound engineers, and more. Students receive training on the most up-to-date studio equipment around, from high-definition cameras, chroma key, and Final Cut Pro, just to name a few. Workshops are available for kids and teens ages 10 to 17 and range from stop-motion animation to music videos, TV production, and filmmaking. For more information, visit www.rctv.org. All right, well, we are back here with live election coverage on RCTV of the April 7th, 2015 election. 
as we're waiting for some of those precincts to be tabulated. We mentioned before about some of the uh, forums that we did, the candidates forums that we had, and we have some behind the scenes footage yes. of the candidates <laughs> forums that we want to show you and kind of see kind of what goes into producing one of these candidate forums. So kind of as we look at this, you can kind of get a feel for what's happening uh, while we're producing the candidates forums and, and what you see on TV is sometimes is different, sometimes it's a bit <laughs> hectic behind the scenes. So we can go ahead and take a look at that footage. You can see we did kind of a very quiet and dark uh, studio for it's the- very intense. The set was yeah, very intense for, for the for selectmen. selectmen. And it, yes. it took a lot of effort to set this up. It's a real lighting challenge. Uh, to put this together and so they were actually here over the holiday weekend uh, doing color tests and doing lighting tests and this is our control room that you're looking at here and making sure that when they actually put it on the air what you saw was the, the candidate or the host but nothing else in the background. Right, which is <laughs> difficult with a triangle table. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. If you, if you saw it, we had the two, all three people who were involved in that were facing each other, and so you really having you know, you know, three different lights kind of pointing from all different directions to make that happen, but still to not light what's going on behind. Sure. You know, and so you know, setting up some of the technical stuff in the background here was really very interesting, and you can see um, this was done by uh, one of our interns here at RCTV, Andrew, high school intern, and he is uh, looking at that. Oh, and here we have actually during the forum, uh, you know, you can see what it looked like from that point of view and in the background and, and, and in the control room and all that. And uh, even the, we had uh, a timer yes. you know, going on. That was a little footage of our timer who, who you know, make, had a watch and, you know, each candidate got two minutes to answer a question and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And we let them know when they had a minute left. We let them know when they were done. We, we had a bell that they rang. And, you know, with the selectman forum, a couple times they went over. They went over <laughs> maybe once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's okay. Which, which must be a little difficult to moderate sometimes, I would think. Yes. I mean, one of the advantages we have in Reading, of course, is that people generally are congenial, you of know, course, and, yes. and they all want to do what's best for the town. And even if they're, they have slightly different ways of making that happen or wanting to see that happen, it's not as though anyone intends ill will towards the town or towards the other candidate. Having said that, you know, they still get a little passionate, a little passionate, passionate the other night, and that's good. <laughs> I like to see that. I like to see that that they're passionate. They're running for townwide office. They should be passionate about it. Uh, so I thought that was good. You know, this is our control room here, and you can see uh, while we're actually going on the air, you can see what it kind of looked like from that point of view. Um, and and uh, so yeah, it is kind of interesting. I don't know, you know, when you were watching it uh, on TV, whether you, whether you noticed any of this kind of stuff. Or... Well, having a little bit of uh, theater background myself, okay. I did I did recognize the triangle causing okay. you know <laughs> being an issue to light. Sure. Um, so that was that was one of the things that I noticed uh, particularly. Um, also, uh, as I said, the, the moderation I think mm -hmm. is a is a d delicate balance because right. you do want to, them to be heard and you want to make sure that sure. everything uh, comes out and, and that they're they're able to get their voices heard. But at the same time, it is a it is a specifically timed event so right. that everyone gets the same amount of fair time. And that's exactly it. Several people have asked me over the years, why don't you just let them do whatever they want? And the problem with that is, is, is one person has the potential of dominating mm. the the thing, and, and that's not and fair. And not in a, not in a malicious way. Not in a malicious way. No, it's just, a, just some people yeah. speak longer, <laughs> and, and, and you want it to be fair, and we want it to be balanced, and we want it to be you know um, really representative for each candidate getting a chance to put their put their word out. So so that was kind of fun to be able to do that. Uh, we showed the selectman some uh, background of the selectman one mm -hmm. there. We also did a school committee forum for the contested seat and it was a completely different set. Very different set. You know, yeah. we had we had a couple of chairs set up and more like a living room kind of thing and, and <laughs> with a rug uh, and everything. With a rug and it was it was quite lovely. Uh, so we are here waiting for some numbers to come in as we uh, are continuing our coverage of the election here on RCTV. Um, we had several ballot questions that are several items on the ballot today as well as a ballot question for the town of Reading, including contested races for the Board of Selectmen and for the Reading School Committee. Both one-year seats. Yeah. Both one-year seats, that's correct. We have some uncontested races for, for the Board three. of Selectmen <laughs> and, <laughs> and the School Committee for three-year seats. And I found it fascinating, personally, that it was the three-year seats that were uncontested. I agree, that and was the unusual. Seat yeah. that was contested. Um, I did have the opportunity to ask uh, the candidates about that and kind of what they thought was is that that 
you know, one year gives a chance to kind of get your feet wet and see what it's like mm. to be on one of these committees, and then they can run for a full three-year term in a year if they so choose, if they find it something they enjoy or something they're good at um, as they kind of complete that learning process. But if they find that it's a, you know, too big a stress on their family or, or what have you, then they fulfill their term in one year and, and, and they'll be done. So, so uh, that, can, was an, yeah. that was interesting. I can see how that would, that would make sense. Um, also, to, to also, I mean, you understand what the position's going to be before you run, but getting that one year rather than three year, it's a, it's a lesser commitment, but still sure. being able to, to fully understand how it's going to affect you personally and professionally. Yeah, and on, and on the school committee, the two people who are running uncontested for the three-year seats started with partial terms. Sure. Um, Elaine Webb ran for a one-year term last year, fulfilling someone else's term, and got Gary Nyan was actually appointed when another uh, member of the committee had to leave, was appointed by the school committee to fill the seat. It wasn't quite a year. It was a little less than a year. Um, so they kind of actually did that. They, mm -hmm. they did their one year of getting their feet <laughs> wet, and then they uh, kind of moved on and decided to, to do a full three-year term in its wake. So, so, that, so the ballot is there with those contested races and the uncontested races. There are also some uncontested races for other town-wide offices, including moderator, uh, where uh, we expect that the person who ran yeah. <laughs> is going to win, <laughs> um, for, for library board, for uh, RMLD commissioner, um, and so, and that also something we haven't mentioned at all tonight yet, of course, is every precinct uh, has town meeting members yes. running tonight as well. Um, one third of all town meeting members were up for election tonight. And uh, one of the things that has been a trend over the last number of years is that a lot of the precincts don't get a full slate of people running for town meeting. I know that precinct two didn't. I believe it was a vote for eight and we had seven. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know I'm, I'm in precinct seven. We had, uh, we did have a full slate. We had eight for eight. Uh, running, but I, and sometimes I, I feel like it's kind of sad that people don't run for some of those places on town meeting. Town meeting, as our town moderator Alan um, has said numerous times, Alan Alan Folds has said numerous times that town meeting is like the legislative body, and why wouldn't you want to vote for people who are representing you? Well, finally, we have some numbers here. Success! We're very <laughs> excited. So we have some numbers for precinct one. This is for the one-year seat for selectmen, and as you see, Barry Berman has collected 142 votes over David Treniello with 135 That's votes. That's very close. But very close, very <laughs> close indeed. Um, but obviously, you know, just seven, seven votes apart. So uh, that'll, we're we'll interested to see what comes up here. Precinct 2, we remember we said, was being counted by hand. <laughs> yes. So it's not that nobody voted in Precinct 2. <laughs> that could take a while. <laughs> it could take a little while. They have to be voted by hand. Uh, precinct 3, we have Barry Berman also on top, 125 to 82. So that's uh, significantly closer, though still... Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's significantly further apart, though sure. still close. Um, and Precinct 4, 220 to 111. So, so it seems that Br Barry Berman is on top in at least yeah. those four. Yeah, Precinct 4, a pretty decisive victory yes. there. Almost, you know, not almost, just slightly less than yeah. double <laughs> yeah. uh, the number of votes in Precinct 4. Here we have Precinct 5. Again, Barry Berman with a pretty uh, commanding lead in Precinct 5, 141 votes to 78 votes for David Traniello. So that's, uh, oh, here we have precinct, precinct 6 with 109 for, for Barry Berman and 69 for David Traniello. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, uh, whether this turns around, but the trend certainly seems to be in, in Barry Berman's favor. Yeah, Precinct 7 as well, 146 for Barry Berman and 97 for David Traniello. Um, so again, he's, uh, he's on top by uh, at least almost 50, margin, yeah. almost, almost 50, yeah. Almost 50 And yeah. then uh, again, precinct 8 is being counted by hand. So, so <laughs> again, it's not, that's not that zero people have voted in precinct 8. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, precinct 8, your <laughs> votes will be counted, don't worry. So, I mean, based on those numbers, unless there's you know, something really uh, bizarre going on there um, in the other precincts, it's, it would seem as though uh, Barry Berman has a pretty uh, significant lead at this point in time. And we'll see what happens with those other numbers yes. coming in. One of the things that I, I you know, point out, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, voter turnout in these different precincts. And you can see, you know, we're talking 200 to 300 right. votes in each precinct. And that, that's it. So that, to me, is an extremely low voter turnout. You're talking 2,500 or something yeah. like that, yeah. you know, with, with, I think there's something. Out of 23,000 Yeah, so, well, 23,000 yeah. people, they're not all registered right, voters, true. you know, because yeah. we, for reasons that sometimes people don't quite understand, we don't allow high school, high school students to vote and, <laughs> and what have you and, and under that, but, but, you know, over 18, but, and they have to register, but, but it's, that seems like a pretty low turnout yeah. to me. 
Um, so uh, you can see here, this looks like uh, our live feed from the field house. It looks like we have a shot there of some of the people who are working on some of those um, uh, hand counted ballots. And They're certainly working out. hard. They've been out there all day. Yeah, they so have been. Those, that's those election workers really do put in a long day. And, mm. and uh, it's not as though they're getting rich by doing this. They, you know, they, they, I think they do get a small amount of pay, but it's not, they don't do it for that. They, sure. they do it because they really do believe in uh, serving the community in this way. And so uh, you know, look at their, they're working hard still, even though um, you know, we've had several precincts already post, at least for uh, the Board of Selectmen. So lots of interesting things happening, and we hopefully will have some numbers on uh, school committee and, and, uh, coming up soon and maybe some of those other races, some of the uncontested races. And uh, we really do hope to have some candidates in here as well. Yeah, that would uh, be great. As the night <laughs> progresses along uh, to see kind of uh, what they have to say, whether they're conceding, whether they're thanking people, or whether they just want to stop by and, and uh, you know, let us know, you know how they feel they on think. election yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like standing out there in the freezing cold? Well, we already heard that already. It wasn't freezing cold. No, it wasn't freezing cold. It wasn't that bad today. It was, it was yeah. Easy. It did rain a little bit, but it wasn't yeah. didn't rain as hard as I thought it was going to. So that was actually a blessing for the yeah. people that were out there. Uh, I can imagine uh, how uh, nasty it would have been if it had been a real nasty rainy yeah. day out there. So. Uh, we also have a ballot question we're waiting on members for and waiting to see whether or not the uh, change in the Reading Charter is going to happen. We had a video earlier a little, giving us information about what that's all about, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing what happens there. Um, I think we're going to take a minute here and uh, kind of catch our breath again and take a small break, and we'll be back in just a moment here on RCTV. A gift idea with a special name or date quickly becomes a treasured keepsake. KDA Custom Embroidery can add that distinctive touch to anything from bags to baby items, wedding and shower gifts, holiday to corporate. We will make your gift stand out from the crowd. Choose from many fonts, colors and designs or bring in your own ideas. We are happy to work with you or choose from the many gift ideas we carry. The Chocolate Truffle is the ultimate chocolate shop, featuring CV Stuffer peanut butter cups, bars and pizzas, signature truffles, hand dipped chocolates, corporate gifts, custom logos, gift baskets, and special occasion chocolate favors made locally in small batches. We ship nationally and deliver locally. The Chocolate Truffle is the affordable luxury. My name is Jesse Downing, and I've been a town meeting member for four years. Good day. My name is Bill Rahm. I've been a town meeting member for 46 years. We may not always agree on the issues, but we do agree how important it is to serve the town in town meeting. So please consider running for town meeting because it is your town. Be involved. Join town meeting. Welcome back to RCTV's 2015 election coverage. I'm here with Ke Kevin Vent. I'm Katie Robertson, and we're your hosts for this evening. Um, we, that was a live shot there of the field house where the polls closed about 45 minutes ago. So they're finishing, well, they're working on counting up the votes both electronically and by hand, as we've said before. Uh, precincts 2 and 8 are down computer counting machines. Uh, we just received some some early numbers uh, for the school for the selectmen race, where Barry Berman seemed to have a lead in all reporting precincts. So we have uh, the selectmen race, a school committee one one year race, as well as a charter question. Um, so here we are for uh, for one year for the board of selectmen in precinct precinct one. We have Barry Berman, 142 over David Traniello, 135. Uh, precinct two again is uh, is is being counted count. by two. <laughs> yes, yeah, being counted by hand. Um, 
So there's a reader, a counter, and an observer in precincts two and eight tonight. Here is uh, precinct three, and we have Barry Berman with 125 votes and David Treniello with 82 votes. Um, so again, you know, a pretty commanding lead there for, for, for Barry Berman in precinct three. Precinct five is coming up here. We have Barry Berman with 141 votes and David Treniello with 78 votes. In precinct six, Barry Berman also on top with 109 to David Treniello's 69. Again, about 40, 40 points difference there. Um, uh, so Barry Berman on top in Precinct 7, also 146 to 97. And as we're going to see here in a moment, you're going to see all <laughs> zeros for Precinct 8. That is one of the precincts where the ballot machines were uh, broken today, and so they're counting those ballots by hand. Uh, so again, uh, you know, for the people who voted in Precincts 2 and 8, you know, don't worry, your votes were in fact counted. Um, so we're just waiting to get those final results as well as results from school committee race as well. The school committee race was a three-way race for a one-year seat with three different candidates vying for that position. And we expect and hope very soon to see some of those uh, uh, results come to us so that we can uh, find out what's going on there tonight. True. As we mentioned, the ballot question also, the ballot question uh, we're, we're still waiting to hear from. And uh, there's also uh, several other townwide seats who only had uh, one person running for them and so they uh, they uh, obviously we presume they're going to win um, uh, there's also by the way a writing campaign at least one writing campaign that we're aware of for nobody pulling papers and and running for the board of assessors which is kind of an interesting uh, situation there with the board of assessors as is if the home rule charter passes then it's no longer going to be an elected position so this would could potentially be whoever wins there could potentially be the last person ever elected to the board of assessors <laughs> here in the town of Reading and then of course the town meeting seats in each precinct and they're then we also have the town, on the, the town today. meeting seats and as we mentioned before you know many of those seats were unfilled people didn't mm. pull papers and didn't uh, run for several of those seats in a couple of precincts they were full but but uh, in many precincts they were not even though uh, we saw the people being encouraged to run for town meeting there in the spot that happened during <laughs> our break here just a moment there. And I've always, I'm always befuddled by that, it really am, because I don't understand why people wouldn't want to be running for and, and representing the town, you know, representing their, their neighbors, literally their neighbors, mm. you know, in the legislative body of our town. So this continues to be a live look here of the uh, field house down where they're counting the ballots and, and, and getting some results for us. We are going to head off to another short break here now as we look forward to having some uh, results. Oh, we have the oh, results. This excellent. is outstanding. <laughs> All right, so this is the ballot question, whether or not we want to amend the Reading Home Rule Charter. In Precinct 1, we had 213 yes votes and 75 no votes. That's resounding. Yeah, that, that, that's a very strong vote. Precinct 2, counting by hand again. So <laughs> we'll get those numbers for you as soon as we can. Precinct 3, we have 166 votes to 41 votes in favor of amending the Reading Home Rule Charter. And in Precinct 4, another resounding yes, 258 to 47. That's over 200 over, in the yes over column. Two, over 200 in the yes column there. Precinct 5, we have 179 saying yes and 47 saying no. So, uh, Oh, well, well, Precinct they're coming six fast also, now. 135 to 44. So uh, again, it seems like it's going to be a yes at this point. Yeah, almost, almost 100 there. Precinct seven, <laughs> 167 yeses and 54 noes. And then finally, in precinct eight, they're they're still counting. So. Still counting <laughs> and counting the ballots. So. So, you know, it's, from the numbers we have, though, that seems the numbers we have, to be it moving like in the yes department. It seems to be look, moving into the yes department. We'll see what happens in the other two precincts. You know, as we mentioned before with the ballot question, it has already been approved by the state legislature. Both sides of the state legislature has been approved by the state senate and by the state house. So, if the voters choose to do this, then uh, it will go into effect because, yes. because uh, it's, it's already, already moved been through. Yeah. Move through on the state level. We are going to head to break now. <laughs> um, here. A few, a few messages and we'll be back with, uh, with uh, RCTV's election coverage in just one moment. Hello and welcome to Malicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Tropakis. On the menu today we have Roman style lamb with artichokes, barley pilaf, and thick and creamy yogurt filled crepes. So let's get started. This is my first production and uh, we like doing it. 
I really do. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. I enjoy the creativity because it's an artistic presentation and we get to have good food and share it with the community. I love the, the people here, uh, getting the camaraderie about the, the editing and the taping and it's great, it's wonderful. I definitely would encourage others to get involved. It's a, it's a great experience. The, the staff and, and everyone here has really been very supportive. For more information about RCTV, visit us on the web at www.rctv.org. We are RCTV Studios offers quality summer programs for kids and teens. These programs are ideal for the budding actors and actresses of the world, as well as the future directors, sound engineers, and more. Students receive training on the most up-to-date studio equipment around, from high-definition cameras, chroma key, and Final Cut Pro, just to name a few. Workshops are available for kids and teens ages 10 to 17 and range from stop-motion animation to music videos, TV production, and filmmaking. For more information, visit www.rctv.org. Okay, well, welcome back to RCTV's live coverage of the Reading Town local election here on April 7th, 2015. My name is Kevin Vent. I'm here with Katie Robertson, and we have been bringing you some numbers on the Board of Selectmen, the one-year seat on the Board of Selectmen, as well as some numbers on the Reading uh, Charter ballot question. And uh, we hope to have some school committee numbers up pretty soon. Uh, but as we've noticed, and as we've noted a couple of times as we've been running those numbers, you know, voter turnout, very low tonight. Very low, yes. Uh, however, we can say that at this point, Barry Berman seems to have the lead in, many, in, in all of the precincts with the numbers that we have right now, as well as the charter appears to, appears to be passing at this point also. Right. So We are still waiting for numbers from, uh, from the two precincts where they have to hand count the ballots because the ballot counting machines broke down today. And I do uh, want to point out to people who are watching that all the numbers that we're showing you are unofficial. Um, and make sure that that's very clear to everyone that those numbers are unofficial and that they don't really get certified by the town clerk until tomorrow morning. But uh, they are taken from the numbers that the town clerk looks at tomorrow morning. So <laughs> we feel pretty confident with those. Uh, but they are unofficial at this point. We want to make sure that that is understood. So as we see here, we have our live feed from the field house down on uh, uh, Oakland Road at Reading Memorial High School and we can see that the workers are still working hard tabulating some of those uh, hand ballots and, and our crew is down there waiting for those numbers to be posted and we will be here uh, to bring you those numbers as soon as they come in. And hopefully we'll have some of the candidates as well to, to speak with how their day went and uh, what they're planning for the future as well. So Absolutely, we hope that, that those candidates uh, you know, will be here to, to uh, share their vision for the future in yes. the town of Reading with us a little bit. And uh, so we have, we have some school committee numbers okay. coming up now. For so Precinct 1, we have Nancy <laughs> Doctor with 106 votes, Julianne Joyce with 81, and Steve Zessis with 97 votes. very close. Very close, very close indeed. Pre in Precinct 1 there. We saw the Precinct 1 with the uh, Selectmen too. It was also very close. That's true, yes. Uh, precinct 2, we're still waiting on numbers to be voted, counted by hand, as we can see in the, the background. They're still working hard down there. Here we have numbers from Precinct 3. We have 32 votes for Nancy Doctor, 97 votes for Julianne Joyce, and 70 votes for Stephen Zessis. And in Precinct 4, uh, we'll, be getting those. <laughs> we'll be getting those Not to you as soon yet. as we That's can. Okay. <laughs> Precinct 5, however, we have 42 votes for Nancy Doctor, 96 for Julianne Joyce, and 70 votes for Stephen Zessis. So again, as we're looking at this, you know, about 200, a little over 200 ballots cast in this, in this Precinct 4. For, uh, school committee. And in Precinct 6, we have 45 for Nancy Doctor, 64 for Julianne Joyce, and 60 for Stephen Zessis. So yes, these are, uh, these are very close. Very close. Um, yeah. Precinct 7, we have 67 votes for Nancy Doctor, 86 votes for Julianne Joyce, and 71 votes for Stephen Zessis. And in uh, Precinct 8, we're still counting, so we'll get those numbers to you as soon as we, as soon as we can get them. 
So I think that the you know based on what we've seen thus far, the school committee race is still kind of still kind of up for grabs Very here. Very close, yeah. As we're waiting for uh, the other two precincts. Actually, we didn't have precinct, <laughs> precinct four, four either. Precinct four so too. We're still <laughs> waiting for three precincts actually to report, and so uh, I still think that that one's still kind of up for grabs there a little bit, and so we'll have to wait and see on what's going to happen with the school committee race. We had numbers for, and we have numbers for the, the uh, board of selectmen as well as for the ballot charter question, ballot. The, charter, yes. the, the charter question as well. So uh, as we get those numbers and as we get updated numbers, we will bring those to you absolutely. And uh, they are counting the ballots right now and the hand counts, and obviously it takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> because as we mentioned before, they have three people that go through these ballots. They have a reader who, who reads the ballot. We have a counter who marks down kind of what's going on. We have someone observing the process, making sure that they're getting it right, as well as a police officer around just to you know keep the peace. <laughs> um, you know, also just to make sure it's a fair process and, and really to ensure that uh, every uh, ballot does in fact get counted. I think that's always people's fear when it, we start talking about hand counted ballots in a, in a large scale election kind of thing is that what happens if they miss one mm. you know it's as though the machines aren't capable of missing one but a person could possibly miss one and so, well and in a in a voter turnout where the turnout is low your every vote does count every vote absolutely <laughs> does count all right so here we have some updated numbers with uh, board of selectmen the one year seat which is the contested seat we have barry berman with 142 votes and david Treniello with 135 uh, in precinct one, and then in precinct two, we have uh, we're waiting still uh, for those those votes to be counted. Precinct three has 125 for Barry Berman and 82 for David Traniello. Precinct four is coming up here. We have 220 votes for Barry Berman and 111 for David Traniello. In precinct five, it's 141 for Barry Berman and 78 for David Traniello, about double. Uh, just about double there. Precinct 6, we have 109 for Barry Berman and 69 for David Treniello. And then in Precinct 7, 146 for Berman and 97 for Treniello. So about 50 votes difference there. Yeah. And of course, in, in Precinct 8, as we've said, we are still waiting. You can see kind of in the background there uh, of, our, of our shot of the... Uh, of the field house, you can see the process of actually hand counting these ballots. There, there, you can see the three people who are there who are making sure that the process is done fairly and that everyone is everyone's ballot is in fact counted in those two precincts. So for the charter, for ballot question number one today, precinct one has a yes, 213 to no, 75. So that's a commanding lead. <laughs> Absolutely. Precinct two, as we've noted, that's, that's what they're doing <laughs> right there. We can see them. They're counting precinct they're two. Working there. hard. So they're working hard to get that done. Precinct three has 166 votes in favor of the charter and uh, 41 votes not in favor of changing the Reading Home Rule Charter. And then in Precinct 4, it's 258 yes for 47 no. So that's a significant that's one. Over 200 <laughs> votes in, you know, for the one way as opposed to the other in that yeah. precinct. Precinct 5 has 179 votes in favor of the charter question and uh, 47 votes not in favor of the charter question. And then in Precinct 6, 135 yes uh, to 44 no. So overall... Very commanding lead. Again, another yes. commanding lead here. We have Precinct 7 coming up with 167 votes in favor of changing the charter and 54 votes not in favor of changing the Reading Home Rule Charter. And then Precinct 8 we're waiting on, uh, and as soon as we get those numbers, we'll get them to you. And there they are, as we said before, really uh, working on that hard. <laughs> So finally, uh, school committee for the one-year seat, we have Nancy Doctor in Precinct 1 with 106 votes, 81 for Julianne Joyce, and 97 for Stevens Essis. Precinct 2, we are still waiting for the count. Uh, I feel uh, like we've said that 100 times I know, tonight I think, already. I, th I think we might say it again. Probably about 100 <laughs> times, indeed. Precinct um, 3 should be coming up here shortly, and we have 32 votes for Nancy Doctor, 97 votes for Julianne Joyce, and 70 votes for Stephen Zesses. And in uh, Precinct 4, let's see, we don't have numbers still, for still Precinct 4 for yet. Precinct so. 4. I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, I'm not really sure. Precinct 5, we have 42 votes for Nancy Doctor, 96 votes for Julianne Joyce, and 70 votes for Stephen Zesses. And then in Precinct 6, we've got uh, 45 votes for Nancy Doctor here, uh, 64 for Julianne Joyce, and 60 for Stephen Zesses. So the two top candidates there are only separated by four votes. Yes, very close. In Precinct 7, we have 67 votes in favor of Nancy Doctor filling the one-year seat on school committee. We have 86 for Julianne Joyce filling that seat and 71 for Stephen Zesses filling that seat. And then Precinct 8, we'll get to you as soon as we can. Um, so that's a, a rundown. Yeah, <laughs> that's a rundown of, uh, of where we are right now. Again, all of these numbers are unofficial. Right. So uh, as soon as we as soon as we can uh, get official numbers and unofficial numbers for precincts eight and two, 
we'll get them to you. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, several things uh, looking very clear uh, tonight a little bit, and we're, we're waiting just to see some of those final precincts. Uh, and what happens with them and how they are going to vote and, and or how they voted, I should say. The polls have been closed for just about an hour now here in Reading, and uh, we are waiting and getting some of those numbers. So it's, it's, it's uh, been a kind of a fun and exciting night to see how the people of Reading have decided and what they've decided to do uh, so far. And, uh, you know, I could tell you from having uh, hosted the, the two forums between the school committee candidates and the selectman candidates, that really all the candidates who run were, were, were ran were well-spoken and really, you know, had a sense of passion for, for running for the committees that they were running for, the boards they were running for, and really genuinely wanted to do what they thought was right. Um, so I think, you know, Reading would be well served by any of these candidates. At the same time, it is an election, and sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes people, you know, lose elections, and some people win elections, and, and uh, you know, the people have the right in our country to decide who they want to represent them on these different things, and so that's exactly what we're doing tonight, the nature of democracy uh, reigns supreme. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're looking here at the field house as they continue to count the ballots uh, that are coming in and, and, and hand counting those for the two precincts where the ballot machines were broken. And we're going to take a short break here as we wait for uh, some continuing numbers. This, you are watching the election coverage on RCTV. We'll be back in just one moment. A gift idea with a special name or date quickly becomes a treasured keepsake. KDA Custom Embroidery can add that distinctive touch to anything from bags to baby items, wedding and shower gifts, holiday to corporate. We will make your gift stand out from the crowd. Choose from many fonts, colors, and designs, or bring in your own ideas. We are happy to work with you, or choose from the many gift ideas we carry. The Chocolate Truffle is the ultimate chocolate shop, featuring CV Stuffer peanut butter cups, bars and pizzas, signature truffles, hand-dipped chocolates, corporate gifts, custom logos, gift baskets, and special occasion chocolate favors made locally in small batches. We ship nationally and deliver locally. The Chocolate Truffle is the affordable luxury. My name is Jesse Downing, and I've been a town meeting member for four years. Good evening. My name is Bill Brown. I've been a town meeting member for 46 years. We may not always agree on the issues, but we do agree how important it is to serve the town in town meeting. So please consider running for town meeting because it is your town. Be involved. Join town meeting. Okay, well, we are back here with election coverage here on RCTV, and as we are continuing to wait for numbers coming in from the field house down at Reading Memorial High School, I'm pleased to have one of the candidates who is running for the Board of Selectmen, the one-year seat to the, uh, tonight with us, Barry Berman. Good to see you today, right, Barry. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks you, for having uh, me. You definitely have the look of someone who's spent the days holding a sign in yeah, the wind. Yeah, it was, uh, I've gone to a lot of Patriots games in the cold. <laughs> this, this is like being in the three Patriots games in the cold, so okay. it was, uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun. What, it was, what was it like being out there with the sign holding? What kind of reaction were you getting? You know, it's, it's, it's great because, you know, you see people coming who you know, and then you see folks who don't know, and then there's a, during the middle of the day, there was long periods of time when nobody came, and, sure. and so you wonder, oh my God, we had this. What happens if we gave an election and nobody came? But, <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, cars started streaming in, and, yeah. and so uh, it was. It, it, it got uh, hopeful as the day went on. Sure. So. Any thoughts on on turnout today? Um, from you know, when I talked to Laura Jem, the clerk's office, it looks like it's maybe twelve 
thirteen percent, which is is somewhat typical, I guess, for a town election. Unfortunately, yeah. it's 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 honestly it's disappointing, given the breadth of the issues that that are sure. facing us. And um, so we'd like to see more people come out, but obviously, you know, those those people who did come out wanted their voices heard, and, and uh, so. It is what it is. Yeah. So you, know, you can always tell when someone has been uh, out on the uh, election trail with it today. You have the, the the wind burn and all that. Thing oh going my on. God! It's yeah. I, I haven't even seen. My, I'm looking at my in the monitor <laughs> now. It's like I, I wouldn't have come on if I knew I looked like this. But so I know uh, you do have much of a chance to kind of interact with voters when you're standing there. How many people it, walking in, or most of them driving? in? Most of them are on? driving in. Um, you know, as you know, the Reading has the 150 foot rule right. where you have to kind of stand way outside, you know, people would give you a thumbs up or a honk or uh -huh. a wave and some people would, would just go right by and you think, sure. oh, you know, are they for me, are they for them? Right, <laughs> you <know>? yeah. <laughs> you always kind of play that game in, in your head. But I mean, you know, toward the end of the day, more voters came out, which was, which sure. was, uh, which was hopeful. You yeah. recognized some of your friends and supporters as I did, coming through I the did. It's, it's actually, it's funny, this whole campaign, it's like I didn't, I didn't realize that I had so many friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like you won the lottery. Some yeah, of the friends come out yeah, of the, out so of the it was it was a lot of fun meeting a lot of new people, meeting new, meeting new people, energizing with folks who I'd already known. Sure. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was grueling. It was yeah, grueling, yeah, so. yeah. So um, you know, we don't have any you know, official right. results here yet, but uh, you know, it looks like you're leading in several of the precincts as yep. we've been looking at them now. Um, so just anyone you want to maybe thank or or first of all, I want to I want to. Oh, so many people I want to thank. Thank for all the folks who, who, who believed in me, stood behind me, um, you know, believed in me to the point where they would stand out all day in the cold and, and uh, you know, waving signs. Um, and thank the voters. I mean, it's not official yet, but, um, you know, it looks okay. I'm not going to say anything. Sure. I want to, th I, I definitely need to, to thank my wife, Laura, and my son, Jacob, um, for putting up with this and, and what we'll continue to have to put up with long nights. Uh, out and I also I also want to thank Dave Trinello. Um, you know we spent a lot of time over the last two months kind of you know being in the same room together sure. and you know trying to win the hearts and minds of voters and he worked hard. Um, he's a good guy and um, you know I know that it put the same similar stresses on his family as it did on mine. I think I think Dave has a, a future here, political future in Reading too. I, so I just want to thank him for his participation in this. Um, I think it, I think we made each other better, and so yeah. um, than just you know having a race where where no one is running against. Yeah, and so. I know when we did the forum, I mean you had a you know a very spirited conversation yeah. at the forum, and yeah. that was well received by many people in yeah. the community. I've heard a lot yeah. from people in the community talking about that and really appreciating the time that you and David both put into preparing that and yeah. coming out and putting that together. It was uh, that was that was hard work, but I, yeah, but I thought that was good. It you know kind of it, it kind of showed the differences between us. A lot of things maybe we had some similar ideas. Sure maybe different approaches to it. Obviously, both of us care about the town mm -hmm. um, to put ourselves out there. Um, I, I also want to just sort of send a message to my, hopefully, I'm not going to say soon to be, fellow Board of Selectmen. Um, I look forward to working with you. Um, I think being on the board, you know, I'll bring some energy and commitment and some passion. Um, I know that there's uh, also a lot of differences on the way some of us think, but I think all of us agree that we really need to move the town forward. and. You know, I'm willing to come in on day one and just, you know, w work with them sure. and with the school committee and with the finance committee and with the manager and, and with the superintendent and all the different town committees to really work and make this, uh, this town as best, as best as we can. All right, well, thank you for coming in and sharing yeah. a few minutes with us, Barry. As we yeah. said, the numbers aren't official yet, and we're still waiting on a couple of precincts because of the hand counting yeah. of the ballots, yeah. but I appreciate you Great. coming in. Thank I know it's been a long and it's, tough it's, day it's for all, you. We're going to go we're gonna back down and watch them count them one at a watch, time. So yeah. <laughs> Nothing more exciting yeah, than counting them know, one at a time. I don't want to go to bed without, without knowing. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, uh, well, we do right. appreciate you coming right. by thank and, and uh, sharing yep. a couple right. minutes with us. Thank you. I'm going to kick this over now to Katie, who's at the in the candidate studio and has one of the candidates for school committee with her right now, Nancy Doctor. So Katie, go ahead and take it away. Nancy Doctor, uh, who is running for the one-year seat for school committee. Hi, Nancy. How's Hi. You? Good. You know, I actually came down because, uh, as you know, they're still counting, but I'm actually, you know, not in the running anymore. It's a really close race between Julie and Steve and just wanted to wish them both the best of luck. It's actually been really nice to actually get to know them during the campaign, and I think Either one will be an excellent, uh, you know, addition to the school board. So I've enjoyed working and getting to know both of them. Great. Um, what was the most interesting part of this process for you? Actually getting to know both of them, to oh, be great. honest with you. After our debate here at RCTV, we actually uh, 
actually went out, and uh, we should have been mic'd for that um, <laughs> because it was actually quite enjoyable. So I, I got to know them both, and uh, actually talking to them both in the field house. Hopefully, they're both going to be um, joining town meeting. So that will be that will be even nicer. So we do have the unofficial numbers. Um, so can you speak to uh, what you saw at the field house today? Uh, were you at the oh, yeah. right now, literally, it's really close, and I think they're really waiting to see, um, you know, who is going to emerge, uh, you know, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just really they're apart by just a, a, a small margin. Sure. So. Is there someone you'd like to, are there people that you'd like to thank? And oh, I'd like to thank the people who came out and supported me and voted for me, and I greatly appreciate that. Great. All right, Kevin, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you very much, Nancy. It was great to speak with you. Thank you. All right, thank you uh, uh, for that interview there, Katie, and we thank Nancy for coming on down and uh, showing us a little bit about uh, uh, what was going on up there today, and, and they are still waiting for those numbers to be finished and completed there, but uh, we do thank Nancy Doctor, who is a uh, candidate for Reading School Committee, for coming by today. As we said before, we do have some numbers that uh, we have shared with you already in terms of the selectman race and the school committee race, as well as the uh, ballot question that we had today for the charter. We have our uh, election workers who are still counting those ballots in yeah. precincts 2 and 8, and uh, we're hoping to get those numbers in as quickly as they can. But as you can see, just by even this video, what kind of process that is. They're, they're looking through and making sure they get everything correct. They have a reader, they have a counter, they have an observer, and they have also a police a presence there just making sure everything is even. Um, we are still waiting for the numbers uh, to come from there, and as soon as we get them, we will, we will bring them to you. Um, you know, I really think it's exciting, Katie, when they uh, come on in and, and share with us a little bit about what the day was like. You know, Barry was, uh, Berman was talking about how, how uh, exciting it was, really, for him to watch the voters come in as they kind of streamed in at the end. <laughs> um, so, you know, and Nancy kind of talked a little bit about that as well. process as well with uh, with waiting for those numbers. Um, I think we should be thanking our, our voting uh, volunteers and uh, who are who've been working down there all day. Um, again, as you said earlier, they uh, they do it for the love of it. That's for sure. So uh, great job for them all today, especially in the face of uh, some unexpected technical mishaps. Yeah, and when we have some of those technical mishaps, I mean, it's never, at least in my time here in Reading, it's never really happened. And so, you know, it's kind of a first time thing, and so we're not expecting hanging chads or anything like that. You know, uh, because, you know, for those of you who voted today, you know, you're filling in a circle, you're not poking a hole in a ballot or anything like that. So, but it does take time, and, and it takes a little bit of, of energy to get those done, and, and, and we can see how the machines are just so much faster. We've gotten the results from precincts that had the machines today, but those hand counted ballots, they take a while. Each one has to be gone over. And remember, the ballots were two-sided today because of the ballot question being on the back. So, uh, so you know, it does take some time, but we, uh, we're going to be here and bring the final results to you, uh, the, the one official, uh, as long as it takes here tonight on RCTV. <laughs> and so uh, we're just looking forward to having some of that happen. I still, uh, you know, want to talk a little bit about town meeting, Katie, and, and how... Uh, it does seem to be seem to that that town meeting is like everyone's last concern, and we just don't seem to have a full slate going on for town meeting right at, at this election. Yes, I agree, um, and I think that's something that happens in a lot of our local elections. I think that there are several times uh, throughout the the election process where town meeting seats have not been filled, and um, there have been issues with reaching a quorum occasionally. So um, that's that's a real shame in our in our town uh, in our town procedures that that is uh, something that needs to happen occasionally. Yeah, and we're at town meeting coming up in a couple of weeks, you know, you know, having the less people filling some of those, I believe it's 192 seats, just, just makes it uh, our representation a little less than it should be. You know, e each uh, precinct is supposed to have those 24 people representing you at town meeting, and when someone doesn't run for it, then you're not as represented as you should be. As, as, as a citizen, I'm not as represented as I should be because people aren't running. And, and so hopefully, you know, we can uh, continue to spur on some interest in town meeting and what's going on. We have some uh, continuing live footage here from uh, the Fieldhouse, and we have some numbers that we want to continue to report. This is the charter, uh, uh, the ballot question for the uh, Reading Home Rule Charter, Precinct 1, uh, 213 votes for yes and 75 votes for no. In Precinct 2, we're still counting the votes, so we'll get those numbers to you as soon as we can. 
Precinct uh, 3, we have 166 votes for yes and 41 votes for no. And then in Precinct 4, 258 yes, 47 no. I want to know maybe the difference in Precinct 4 that over 200 people voted <laughs> in favor of this as opposed to some of the other precincts. Very interesting. Uh, we have uh, in Precinct 5, 179 yes and 47 no. And uh, Precinct 6, 135 yes, 44 no. So. Precinct 7, we have 167 people who are voting in favor of ballot question number one, which is the Reading Home Rule Charter, and we have 54 people voting no. And Precinct 8, again, we're still waiting on those numbers. All right. Oh, and here we have some school committee numbers as well for the one-year seat. Precinct 1, we have uh, Nancy Doctor for 106 votes. We have Julianne Joyce with 81 votes and Stephen Zessis with 97 votes. And then in Precinct 2, we're waiting on those numbers. For Precinct uh, 3, we have Nancy Doctor with 32 votes, Julianne Joyce with 97 votes, and Steve Zessis with 70. Precinct 4, Nancy Doctor has four, 51 votes, uh, Julianne Joyce has 137 votes, Steven Zessis is working with 133 votes. Only a fourth difference there in Precinct 4 between uh, the two lead candidates. Precinct 5, we have Nancy Doctor with 42 votes, we have Julianne Joyce with 96 votes, and we have Steve Zessis with 70 votes. In Precinct 6, Nancy Doctor has 45 votes, Julianne Joyce 64, Stephen Zessis 60, so another very close race. Yeah, only four votes separating them there as well. In Precinct 7, Nancy Doctor has 67 votes, Julianne Joyce has 86 votes, and Stephen Zessis 71 votes. And then in Precinct 8, where we'll get those numbers for, to you as soon as we can. Uh, so now we have the Board of Selectmen for the one year. In uh, Precinct 1, we have Barry Berman with 142 votes, David Traniello with 135 votes. Precinct 2, we're still waiting for the count to come in from the uh, hand ballots, hand counted ballots. Uh, Precinct 3 will come up in a second. We have 125 for Barry Berman and 82 for David Traniello. Precinct 4, we have Barry Berman with uh, 220 votes and David Traniello with 111. In Precinct 5, Barry Berman has 141 votes to David Traniello's 78. Precinct 6, Barry Berman has 109 votes and David Traniello with 69 votes. And then for Precinct 7, Barry Berman has 146 for, and for David Traniello, there are 97 votes this evening. And as we're, we're still waiting for Precinct 8's votes to come in. I believe Katie now has our town moderator, Alan Folds, and uh, let's, so we're going to kick it over to her and uh, let's find out what's going on with Alan. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I'm here with Alan Folds, who ran unopposed today for town moderator. Um, how many years have you been town moderator? This Alan? makes the 19th term, 19th, 19th. one-year term. And uh, how is your campaigning this year? <laughs> <laughs> About the same as it has in the past. Yeah. <laughs> um, were you down at the field house today? I was, yeah. I actually have gone to the field house or before that, the town hall, since the day I moved into town. I moved in on March 27th back in 1980, and the election, I think, was a week later, and I went down to the town hall, and I've gone to the polls ever since. It's a great night in town. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun day for us, too. How does the hand counting of the ballots change this election from others in the past? It's almost <laughs> like a blast from the past. And, uh, I grew up in Winfield nearby, and actually when I was in high school, I was a hand counter. So it kind of brought back memories watching them uh, pass the ballots back and forth. And uh, so tell us a little bit about the position of town moderator. What is it that you're responsible for? Well, the chief duty, of course, is to uh, moderate the town meeting, which is the, the community's legislative body. In that role, I don't take an active part. It's my job to make sure that the debate is run fairly and legally. Um, a couple of other duties I have. I am chairman of the appointing authority for both the bylaw committee and the, um, the finance committee. And this year, I had an extra duty. The town meeting voted in its wisdom to create a charter review committee mm. and made the moderator the chairman. Okay. So uh, if, the char if the charter passes tonight, can you speak to how that will change uh, the town's uh, responsibilities and, r and running of the town, I guess? Sure. Um, actually, it doesn't make a lot of changes. For the most part, we concentrated on making it easier to read, 
um, bringing it back into line with some of the state laws that have changed in the last several years. The charter went into effect 29 years ago, and the last time we had a review was 10 or 11 years ago, and things changed. Mm -hmm. So it was time to take a look at it. While we were at it, we made it easier to read. We changed the order of some of the things to, um, so it was easy to find. There was also one whole section that dealt with the transition from the old government to the new, which of course happened back in 1986, except for historical purposes. It served no purpose being in the charter. And if you really want to know what happened, you can, you can still find it. <laughs> so we removed that basically to make it easier. The one big change that we did um, uh, recommend was to have the assessors appointed rather than elected. They've been elected for years and years. But in the last several elections, there haven't been many candidates. In fact, this year we did not have a candidate. And um, we thought it was probably better for the selectmen to take a, a really studied view of who should be in that position rather than just leave it to chance for a, a person might get two or three write-in votes and now you're one of the three assessors in town. That, um, that was really the main change. Other than that, it was fairly straightforward, like I said, making it easier to read. Excellent. And it's, as we've said before, it's already moved through the House and the Senate at, a, in, at the, at the uh, state level. So, right, right. So um, based on today's vote, then it will go through. Yes, it looks, well, the first six precincts, mm. it looks pretty good for it. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so is there anybody you'd like to thank today for uh, supporting your campaign, your <laughs> uncontested campaign? I, I just have to thank people that actually came out. It's, to me, it, Town, meet, town government is where everything happens. It's where you get all your services, the fire and police, your school and library, water and sewer, um, trash pickup. It, but the voting percentages are almost backwards. This is where people should be voting. And I, I wish the, um, the percentages were higher, but that's no complaint with the people that did come out. They're the <laughs> ones that, uh, <laughs> that made the effort. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I've been here with Alan Folds, who ran uncontested for the town moderator seat today in the uh, election on April 7th, 2015. I'm going to throw it back to Kevin. Uh, thank you very much, Alan, for being with us. Great. Thank you, Katie. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Uh, we are uh, happy to have Alan come in today, and thank you for talking, uh, Alan, about the charter and some of the changes that may happen, assuming it passes tonight. We'll start waiting on some of those numbers. We are going to take a moment here on RCTV's coverage of the election and go to break. We'll be back in just one moment. You're watching election coverage on RCTV. Um, final thoughts. People here, the people driving by, beeping, waving, everybody walking by, the people holding signs for all of the different candidates. Everyone is very supportive of each other and just uh, everybody appreciates the process and the time that's gone in from everyone. So I think I just have a good feeling about it. Um, I don't know anything about the numbers or how that's all working, but um, I'm very happy to be standing here today. I'm ho I hope I'm victorious in the end, but if not, um, uh, I'm going to continue, you know, trying to, to help the community as much as I can, you know, no matter what seat I hold. Uh, just hoping that uh, everything goes well, and I'm grateful for everybody who's come out and voted, and appreciate the support. I just think it's been, it's been a great process. Um, you know, we have two great candidates. You know, we, we might have some differing visions of the town, but we put our message out there. It's been civil. It's been great. Um, you know, I just, if anybody's going to see this before 8 o'clock, I just encourage you, no matter what you do, just come out. Just come out and vote. That's really the most important thing for the town. Uh, I'm excited to find out what the conclusion is. Um, you know, it's been a long, well, short but arduous run, and um, you know, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. Um, and we're, you know, cautiously optimistic that things will go our way. Uh, I think it's, it's a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. And you know, looking forward to the opportunity to sort of be able to serve and give back, and again, appreciate everyone's help and support, and get out there and speak your piece. My family has been extremely supportive. My girls are kind of funny about it. They're in fourth and seventh grade, so they have a different perspective. But my husband has been reaching out to his friends in the community through, you know, it, through hockey and different, different avenues and everybody passing out signs, and he's been right there you know, with them. So it's, they've been very, very good. Yeah, they've been great. Uh, I think it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be to sort of get to this point, but I think um, I've also been, enjoyed sort of all the different points of view and everybody who's come out and sort of approached me just to say, hey, glad you're stepping forward and expressing their point of view and engaging people in a discussion. Uh, it's been a real learning experience for me and uh, it's been a lot of hard work but a lot of rewarding work. Uh, I've got to talk to thousands, literally, of Reading residents to find out what's important to them, uh, what's important to them in a candidate. Um, and today's the day, so I'm hoping that they'll all turn out 
and uh, vote for their candidate. It's really important. I still can't get over the fact that I drive around town and I see my name on people's lawns. To me, that's such a foreign concept. But, you know, I want to thank all the people who, um, who I reached out to who are helping. Uh, they've been great. The support, the camaraderie, you know, the inspiration that they gave me, it's just been, it's been fantastic. Um, the one thing I would, um, I would encourage anybody who's going to run for town-wide office, it's harder than, it's harder than it looks. Um, you know, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of commitment. You have to ask a lot of people shouldn't take anything for granted just because you know somebody don't assume they're going to vote for you you have to go out and ask people one by one for their support and it's it's hard work but it's it's fulfilling all politics is local all politics is local this is the this is this is the greatest thing i mean you know you pick up the paper today you find out that you know washington's in stalemate boston is losing money you look in here Every dollar that we spend goes into the town. So, you know, it's a great thing. Decisions are made by your neighbors, people who you trust. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's a great thing. And so, um, you know, if you're going to be involved in any type of government, local government is the best thing to be involved in. Well, it was great to have Alan here in studio, Katie, and, and talk a little bit about what was going on with the, uh, the charter and all of that. And it's particularly interesting why they chose to uh, change the way that the assessors are chosen in town. Yes, right now that's a, uh, it was a write-in position on the ballot today, actually. So we had uh, one write-in campaign for that. Uh, Stephen Crook ran a write-in campaign for the assessor position, which has been elected previously, though if the charter gets passed, it will be appointed in future by the Board of Selectmen. Right. I found it interesting that they kind of analyzed the fact that people haven't been running for that and so you know if people aren't running for it the possibility of of having someone get elected to it by with one or two or three votes who may or may not be qualified uh, to do that and so they kind of saw that as kind of a hole in the in the current charter and so they decided that that would be a, a something that would be worthy of, of changing in, in a new charter would it were it to pass today yes so, so well uh, that's interesting to hear and I'm, I'm glad alan came came and explained that to us just a little bit well we have uh another one of our candidates with us here tonight we have uh, julianne joyce who is running for the one-year seat for school committee how are you doing tonight? Good, how are you, Kevin? Good to see you here. Thank and you. Uh, we don't have any official results yet. I know it's really close, but I thank you for coming on by. And how was the day uh, doing the sign holding and all of that? It, it was a very long day. Um, the, for the past couple of days, I've been thinking to myself, am I really going to stand there for 13 hours? <laughs> and I will say I stood there for 12. I did take, oh, well, I did take a break. Took a break. Um, yeah. But um, although a very long day, and I probably, sh I probably should have trained harder for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was great. It was the people, you know, coming. I, I know the turnout was low, but people driving by, beeping, stopping by, shaking sure. a hand. Um, it was fun to be part of the process. It's yeah. my first entry into it, and it was, it was an enjoyable day. Did you see people that you knew as they were driving by? And I did. I did. That's a, so it was a lot of enthusiastic beeping, as I would say, and, ju and just waving. <laughs> and, it was, and, it, and, it, and it also was a great feeling, too, because there were people that... Um, I reached out to and my family reached out to and they mm -hmm. came to support me today okay. and that was a great feeling. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of the, the grassroots of the democratic process a little bit exactly. there, you know, I'm holding a sign and saying, yeah. please vote for me. Exactly. And, and that, that's really interesting. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if there's anyone maybe you want to thank. We, we don't have any official results. We're still waiting. It's kind of close right now to see it is. what's going to happen. So we really have to wait for those last two precincts, but I don't know if there's anyone yeah. maybe you want to thank. It is very close, and I, I just maybe heard it's maybe an hour away. Oh, an I, hour away, okay. That, but, you know, that's, that's not official either. <laughs> but that was, that was, that you was heard a, it here first, everyone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was a good guess. Um, and um, I have two children at home, and my husband is on a flight to... Um, LA for business, so sure. I've got to get home to the yeah, children. Yeah. Um, but yes, I need to thank, I really, I probably shouldn't name names because I know I will forget someone, sure. but um, the outpouring of support and, um, and friendship that I have received from family, friends, neighbors, it's been oh, absolutely overwhelming and astounding. I am so appreciative of everyone that came and stood in today's weather, that hosted um, a meet and greet for me. I really should say a special thank you to Pat and Catherine Jordan and Teresa Murphy for putting mm -hmm. together a wonderful little event for me and my friends and, my, and our supporters. Um, it's just, I, I, I'm inspired by the process. Okay, yeah. well that's excellent to hear. And uh, we don't know any, uh, what's gonna happen from this point forward, but I'm sure that you're looking forward to working with the committee, regardless of whether you win tonight. If, if, I'm, if, if I win, that's terrific. I'm looking forward to the seat. If not, 
this will not be the last you've seen of me. <laughs> oh, so, okay, something else okay. you've heard here first. But so, another campaign in the future here. I do want to say that right now I'm going home to watch the, the final results on RCTV. All right, well, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. okay, well, thank you for stopping by tonight, and thank you for uh, serving our town by even running for office, and uh, we'll look forward to the results and see what happens. Thanks very much. All right, okay. we are going to take it over to Katie now, who is with another one of our candidates. She, she is sitting with uh, David Traniello, who has dropped by here at RCTV. Katie? Katie? Thank you, Kevin. Uh, as Kevin said, I'm here with David Traniello, who ran for the one-year seat for Board of Selectmen against Barry Berman today. How are you tonight, David? Doing well, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Great. Thank you. Um, so how was this process for you, uh, running for the Selectmen? Uh, it's been a long process, mm -hmm. and it's been a... Um, uh, I'm very grateful uh, throughout this process for all the support, the support of my wife and my, my family my friends, my supporters. Um, it's been a long, long process, a lot of hard work, uh, but very fulfilling. Great, great. And is there uh, anyone you'd, you'd like to thank in, in addition to those uh, that you just did for, for supporting you in this campaign? Um, yeah, uh, ultimately I'd like to thank my wife, Jen. Uh, she's been my rock throughout this process. Uh, I'd like to thank all those folks that supported me. I'd like to thank the current Board of Selectmen. Um, I'd like to thank those part, those friends and uh, supporters in uh, in Rotary, and in all the community activities that I uh, take part in. Um, and I think I just heard Julie say, and I'll and I'll echo. I, I don't think this is the last that you'll that you'll see of me. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Excellent. Um, so I look forward to uh, continuing to be active in our town. Do you have any specific ideas on where you'd like to go from here, or, or uh, not yet? Uh, not yet. I'd like to go home and. Go to bed. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day, a uh, cold day, uh, but I'd like to thank those folks that uh, that bared with me today and bared the weather and uh, um, and uh, and stood out with me today and welcomed our, our citizens to the polls. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing you again in future um, and and seeing your name on a ballot in future. Hopefully. Thank you. Thanks very <laughs> Thanks much. Thanks very much, David. Appreciate your time. Yes. Nice to have you here. So that was uh, David Terniello, who ran for the one-year Board of Selectmen seat. We still have, uh, we still do not have official numbers for any of the uh, elections tonight. It's still uh, early, early counting, and we're still waiting on those those uh, ballots from precincts two and eight to be counted individually. Yes, and so as we wait for those, we're going to continue to bring you live coverage of the election here uh, at RCTV. And as uh, we do have those two precincts, Precinct 2 and Precinct 8, who were waiting for their numbers. Those ballots are being hand counted. One of the things that we mentioned earlier, specifically when town moderator Alan Folds was on, was that nobody ran for the Board of Assessors this year. Nobody pulled papers and got the signatures and actually ran an official campaign. And that was one of the things they were actually trying to address by changing the charter. Well, there was at least one person that we know that did run a writing campaign because they recognized the possibility of what could happen uh, in this transition period. And so I have with me now Stephen Crook, who uh, ran a, a writing campaign, the, the only one we know of, there may have been mm -hmm. another one, but the only one that we're aware of at least, a writing campaign for the Board of Assessors. So Steve, what did you notice that made you decide to run for the Board of well, Assessors? Well, the first thing I noticed that nobody had taken out papers. And the concern was, and some of this also having served on the committee that had reviewed the charter, was that somebody might get elected with, say, one or two votes who had no real interest in it and then ends up on the seat even for three years. So my thought was what I would do is write and run it, run a writing campaign and serve just just for a short period long enough that between Board of Assessors and the Selectmen and maybe town manager we could find a, a qualified candidate to be appointed okay. um, under the under the new charter rules and then then resign from the position. So if you were to win the write-in campaign tonight um, your intention would be to serve for a little while and then resign. And, yes. And if the charter went, passes, then uh, you'll let the charter do what it's supposed to yes, do. Yes, yes. So what would you do if the charter doesn't pass tonight? <laughs> well, if the charter didn't pass, then what would happen if I were to resign is the position be filled by a combined meeting of the Board of Selectmen okay. and the remaining Board of Assessors, okay. um, which is how it works with, with any committee. Sure, so there's still a process in yes, place. Yes, yes, there's a process if, in place. If that were to happen. So, so basically you were looking at this as an opportunity to really allow the charter to do what yes, theoretically yes. the people will vote for it to do, assuming it passes tonight. And and, and the concern was that you could get someone in there for a three-year term. Who had no particular interest or, right. or so on. Or just so, decided to write his own right. name in just to see what would so happen. So essentially, essentially, I'm trying to keep the seat warm until we sure. can get somebody even better suited. 
Sure. And, and sure. start the appointment process. So, and, so, so what did you do to run the writing campaign? I, I'm kind of interested in well, that. Well, basically, I just kind of spread the word around amongst friends and, mm -hmm. and the candidates who were running. Um, had a Facebook page, Stephen Crook okay. for Assessor, okay. um, to get the word out that way. But sure. it wasn't an active campaign, yeah, yeah. really. But the assumption just, being that yeah. you, know, you'll, you might only need 50, 60, 70 votes. Right. Well, actually... Even a dozen or a couple of dozen votes yeah. might have been enough. And, and it, was, so it was a word of mouth. Sure. Kind of thing, a, lo a low key campaign. So, really, kind of grassroots politics at its best. Yes, just yes. kind of saying, hey, you know, I'd like to run for this. I'm going to run and see what happens. Yeah. All right, well, that's excellent. Uh, so, thank you for doing that. And, and it was a service to the town to make sure that things run smoothly and, yeah. uh, and all that. So, appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit about what was going on. Something a little yeah. different that we don't have every day an active writing campaign. We're going to toss it over now to Katie, who is uh, back with David Traniello again. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I am. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so I'm back with David Traniello, uh, who just uh, informed me that he has some more people to thank, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, in my haste to get back to my uh, dinner, I, uh, I neglected to say congratulations and thank you to my opponent, Barry Berman. Uh, he ran a great campaign, uh, although the results aren't final. looks like he's uh, ultimately going to prevail in this race. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't leave without saying uh, thank you and congratulations to Barry and to his family. For a, uh, for a great campaign. Uh, that's all I really wanted to, uh, to say before I left. But thank you for giving me that opportunity. To of course, yeah. That. You both ran a great campaign, so it was great to have you here tonight and also for the forum last week. So it was great that you were great. able to you come out for that. You guys did a good job with that, too. <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. We appreciate that. All right, Kevin. So thank you very much, David. Uh, I'm going to send it back over to Kevin uh, uh, for some continuing coverage. All right, thank you, Katie, um, and uh, thank you, David, for coming back and making that clear. As we said, the numbers are unofficial at this point, but uh, uh, they seem to be pointing in a particular direction for David, so I appreciate him coming back on and, and uh, congratulating his, his opponent in this race. I'm here also with uh, another one of the candidates for school committee, Steve Zessis. Steve, you've been uh, running a very active campaign, and uh, I know you've been standing out today also. How was it out there uh, with the signs and everything today? It was good. I'm glad the standing out is over. But <laughs> <laughs> we Were you the out there all day? Or? Yeah, most of the day, yes. Okay. I take a few breaks to run my kids and wife to some activities, right. but right. otherwise was out there all day. Yes. And did you have supporters with you uh, as you were uh, standing yeah. out there today as well? Yeah, absolutely, and couldn't made it through this without <laughs> those supporters. <laughs> sure, sure. So, you know, now that the campaign is over, we don't have the results yet, we know mm -hmm. it's close, and so we're waiting for those last two precincts, but now that the campaign is over, kind of what do you think you've learned about uh, about campaigning for, for elected office? I think it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, <laughs> <laughs> um, but overall it's been a very good experience. I met a lot of very interesting people and enjoyed the conversations I've had with people, and again, have enjoyed meeting with people and exchanging the different ideas that they have and hearing what they have to say. Mm, excellent, excellent. And uh, so if you were to win tonight, of course, you'll be taking mm -hmm. your seat on the school committee. If you were to lose tonight, um, how do you, do you plan to still stay involved? What do you plan to do? Um, after, after I course? still plan to be involved. I've had some, some people have sort of approached me about looking into um, town meeting. Okay. You know, and still, you know, I still plan to sort of be involved in the open school committee meetings. Sure, so, I noticed you were there last night. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yes, my son had, one of my sons had lacrosse practice. So it okay. worked out well. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a passion that I have, and so I, I look to continue to be involved. Okay. Anyone you'd like to thank, supporters or family? Just as you've, uh, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I appreciate everybody else, and hopefully everybody was all right over there. Um, and, you know, I couldn't really have done it without them. I'm very grateful to all the people that have come out um, through all of this to sort of offer their support and their well wishes and sure. hold signs and, um, you know, the texts I've been getting all night long. So, you know, especially my wife, she's been a phenomenal campaign manager and doing <laughs> all the things that she's set up. So sure. I really want to thank her and, sure. you know, my family as well. I was saying earlier that, uh, you know, we always consider the, 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 the forums that we do, you know, where, where we had the, the talk between the three candidates as kind of a rite of passage. Uh, right. But I also consider the standing out with the signs <laughs> kind of a rite of passage as well. And everybody kind of comes in and, and has, a, has a, a story to tell about that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, did, you, would, did you notice supporters coming in today or, or people that you knew, friends and family, what have you? Yeah, all of that. Again, I was throughout this process, and especially today, I was amazed at the people that would come up to me. You know, I had one woman come up to me. She, you know, was in was part of the school I went with, part of the Kilm School okay. when I was there as a kid. And okay. I was like, oh, I saw you. I want to come up and say hello, <laughs> and I'm voting for wow, you. And all I, right. You know, it was great to, yeah. to hear some of those things, and it's touching to know that, 
you can have that impact on people. Sure. So, you know, and I should also thank uh, RCTV for the opportunity to sort of get out and thank you for your time and everybody else. All right. Well, we thank you for taking the time to run and, and looking to serve our community in that way. Mm -hmm. And well, we will be waiting for those results and, and we'll see what happens as the, as the night continues on. The, the, the rumor is we're still waiting probably about an hour uh, <laughs> to, find, to get those, those ballots counted, but we'll see what happens there. So thank you, Steve, for coming on and uh, good fortune the rest of the evening and, and we'll see what happens. And thank you for stopping by tonight. All right. Thank you again All for right. your time and thank you everybody at home. All right. Great. Well, we are continuing our coverage here at RCTV uh, of what's uh, been going on with our election. And uh, we're going to now toss it over to Katie, who is interviewing uh, Phil Rushworth, who is the executive director of RCTV. Uh, take it away, Katie. Thanks very much, Kevin. Uh, as Kevin said, I'm here with Phil Rushworth, who is the executive director of RCTV. Uh, this is quite the elaborate set you've got going on tonight. This night has been so much fun for us. Uh, this crew has been fantastic. It's been a lot of planning. And um, we're, we're live and everything's working, which you know, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. <laughs> yeah, it's going um, well, yeah. yes. And you know, your first first time hosting it live is, television, yes. so I want to thank you for, for joining Kevin this year and, and hosting oh, election Oh, thank you for coverage. having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, so this has kind of been a, an ongoing process this week of election coverage, really, with starting with the Board of Selectmen and the school committee mm -hmm. forums, which had very different setups than, than we have tonight. Can you speak a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, tonight we're, we're doing an, a non-camera shoot. Um, right now, there's three cameras on this set. This is our candidate studio. Uh, uh, Kevin's over at the main anchor desk. He's got three cameras on him. We have a camera in the control room that we really haven't used yet this uh, year. We usually put the, the results over that, but we actually have a live feed uh, down at the field house. So I don't know if Ben can do it. Ben's directing right now. Ben, can you go to the can you go to the feed uh, down at the field house? There it is. And then so I I can direct while being on television. <laughs> and I, I just I saw a glimpse of my hair in the uh, in the in the monitor. I've had a headset on for the past <laughs> couple of hours, so you know. You know, n I'm not quite ready for being on TV, but I'm just here filling in time as we're waiting for more candidates to get down. We're s we've got a crew down at the field house, uh, not only running camera, but collecting the numbers and the results, and we're still waiting for uh, the Precinct 2 and Precinct 8 hand counts. So, um, you know, I actually have to talk to you and Kevin during the break is, you know, how much longer do we want to go, um, you know, and, and be on the air? We don't know how long yeah. it will take for, for those Hand counts, uh, hand counts to be uh, added up and sent to us. When I started doing stuff here at the studio, um, you know, we had just switched to the electronic counting, so I have no idea, um, you know, how long that process usually takes. But it looks from the footage like they're doing, you know, they're, they're get, still there. They're still, they're still there. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, can you talk to the kind of setup for today? What went into it? How many people you've had working here throughout this process and everything? A lot, actually. I'm not sure of the number of people we have here today, but we've got camera operators in this room uh, running the cameras on us, which are manual. The uh, cameras on the other set, the, the main anchor uh, set, uh, are robotic and they're controlled in the other room. We have a technical director, someone working on graphics, someone doing audio. We've got a remote camera down at the field house. We've got three people doing numbers. Uh, who are down there dealing with uh, the town clerk and, and helping us get those numbers there. Uh, our director of operations is typing the numbers and getting them on the screen and sending them to our computer so that people who are watching at home can know what happened. And, you know, we aren't, we're not holding any numbers back. We'll put them on <laughs> as soon as we get them. So, um, but, you know, we've had some people come here tonight who, who think that they may have won or lost. And we don't call the races here. Only the town clerk can uh, certify a race as being over and done and actually bill brown called me if bill you're out there watching uh <laughs> he called while i was directing and wanted uh um people to know that um what did he want to see i'm i'm talking about too much stuff bill <laughs> brown, something about town meeting i can't remember what it was luke will come in and tell me what it was. um i can't remember can you talk to some of the things that RCTV is going to be doing in the future? I know there's some new camps for the summer. Yeah, we have a, a couple. Um, uh, we have two of our week-long um, TV uh, workshops that run for a week. They're usually 8.30 in the morning to about 5.30, so it's a good way for parents who are working uh, that can send to their, their children to the studio for uh, television workshops. And we have a new camp that we're doing this year, which is a two-week-long camp. It's for actors and for behind-the-scenes uh, folks who are... Uh, we'll be shooting a movie. We'll be doing, um, we'll have a script and we'll be um, shooting that film in that period and then we'll have a screening. Oh, so great. That's new. Yeah. 
So that's exciting. <laughs> yes. And it sounds like I'm done, so I need to get back in the other room. Okay. So. Have a great rest of the shoot. It's going thank well. You're, thank you. You're doing great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm going to send it back to Kevin now uh, for continuing coverage of our 2015 local election here in Reading, Massachusetts. All right, all right, thanks, Katie. Yeah, we are still uh, waiting for some of those final numbers, and it might be a little while before some of those final numbers and some of those ballot questions come in, but uh, we have been running the numbers for the contested races on your screen as they come up for the Board of Selectmen and for the school committee, as well as the contested race for the uh, ballot question, which uh, is the Reading Home Rule Charter ballot question. So I think we're going to take a short break here, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. You're watching election coverage here on RCTV. This is my first production, and uh, we like doing it. We really do. It's uh, it's enjoyable. I enjoy the creativity because it's an artistic presentation, and we get to have good food and share it with the community. I love the, the people here, uh, getting the camaraderie about the the editing and the taping, and it's great. It's wonderful. I definitely would encourage others to get involved. It's a it's a great experience. The the staff and and everyone here has really been very supportive. For more information about RCTV, visit us on the web at www.rctv.org. We are Troop 65124, and you're watching RCTV, a rainbow! RCTV Studios offers quality summer programs for kids and teens. These programs are ideal for the budding actors and actresses of the world, as well as the future directors, sound engineers, and more. Students receive training on the most up-to-date studio equipment around, from high-definition cameras, chroma key, and Final Cut Pro, just to name a few. Workshops are available for kids and teens ages 10 to 17 and range from stop-motion animation to music videos, TV production, and filmmaking. For more information, visit www.rctv.org. Okay, well, we are back here with our live election coverage of the election here in Reading for our local election here in Reading, April 7th, 2015. Katie, one of the things that was pointed out to me, uh, we talked a little bit about town meeting and how there are open slots on town meeting. And uh, one of the things that was pointed out to me, of course, was that, you know, if there's an open slot in your precinct, you can show up to the first night of town meeting and, and they have a, a precinct meeting. Yeah, and, they and do. You can actually get appointed to one of those seats in the precinct meeting. I don't know if that's something that you know anything about. Or <laughs> um, I do, actually. I know that if you, uh, if you show up for one of those, those initial meetings at town meeting, then they'll uh, vote you in, and then you can uh, serve on town meeting uh, for that session and, and be a town meeting member, which is a great opportunity for people that may not have known that option is open to them and uh, are now interested in being in town meeting, knowing that some of the seats haven't been filled. Sure. And then when it came time for that seat to be elected again, they would be running as an incumbent uh, for town meeting. So that's kind of a kind of a way if someone wants to get involved and they've been watching tonight and thought it was over and it's done. Well, it's not over and done necessarily. There's still an opportunity with those precinct meetings. And if you have a, a question about that, I'm sure you can call town hall and find out who the precinct captain is for your for your precinct and and figure out how you can get that done. All right, well, I am here uh, at our uh, anchor desk with one of the candidates that was running tonight. He was running unopposed for the Board of Selectmen, for the three-year seat on the Board of Selectmen. John Arena, good to see you here tonight, John. Nice and to see you, Kevin. Presume congratulations on, on your win. Uh, we haven't seen numbers, but considering you're running unelected, we're assuming that that uh, probably happened. <laughs> it's, um, you know, I remember three years ago uh, tonight how exhausted I was and how... Um, how physically exhausting it is to stand out in the weather. So Barry and David, uh, your feet hurt, your uh, your ears are cold. You just want a hot cup of coffee and a, a warm shower. And uh, 
it, it is physically exhausting. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, this year it was a little easier. So, <laughs> well, running unopposed is easier. But uh, hey, let me ask you about kind of the next three years coming up. You've been elected to a three-year seat, so you'll be serving the three-year term. What are some of the things you see coming up for the town of Reading that we need to address in the next couple of years? It's a good question. Before I answer that, I just wanted to give uh, my congratulations to uh, both candidates for the board. I, I know uh, Barry and I know David personally. Uh, they're both good men. They're both well respected. They both have outstanding pedigrees, and uh, in the end, either one of these men could have done an outstanding sure. job. Uh, Barry's going to do a fine job. And, Assuming uh, he's won, we, we're not officially calling that yet, but yeah. understand. <laughs> Assuming um, he's won, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but both these guys would would serve well in the town, and I think one of the most imp one rule I think we live by here in Reading. I hope we live by is that when you come into town politics you drop that letter at the end of your name. It really doesn't matter what party affiliation you are. It really only matters what's best for the town and what's best for the average guy in the street. And always keep in your mind that while we think about the average individual, half of the individuals, half of the households, half of the citizens, the voters in town are below that average in terms of opportunity, in terms of, of their ability to fund uh, uh, revenues in the town. And we always have to think about the wide range of um, impacts that families have. Now to your question. Yeah, so that, that leads right into my question. Very um, well, so. Look, the, the big uh, undercurrent this year mm -hmm. is there'll be an override in 2017. Um, uh, some of the, uh, I think the selectmen's debate actually went so far, uh, uh, Barry had mentioned that um, uh, the finance chair's remarks will actually reference that. I'm not sure whether that's in the finished remarks, and it's a, it, I'm not sure how he would know what would happen a week in the future. But um, the big challenge right now is, is how do we make up the gap between revenues and expenses? This town manager and this town government and this school government have done an outstanding job at controlling spending. And the best measure of that is that each year at the end of the budget year, they have returned a goodly measure of unspent budget into free cash. And because of conservative budgeting, revenues have generally come in slightly over estimates. And the combination of those two have contributed to an ever-growing free cash position. That can't go forever. Right. But the big challenge is how do we grow the pie? We hear, we hear I've heard, frankly, a little too much about the need for greater services. And the, by too much, I mean, the services that are needed will be what people demand and are willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. um, we really need to think about how to make the pie bigger, and that comes down to finding other revenue opportunities. There are other unexplored opportunities in the town that I look very much forward to tackling in this coming year. Um, we've started a dialogue with the school committee about uh, potentially looking at opportunities for small amounts of operational savings internally. We both have uh, legal departments. We both have technology departments. We both have what passes for an HR department. There probably are synergies there. Those are the kinds of synergies we're also exploring between mm -hmm. ourselves and Wakefield and Melrose sure. when it comes to the health sure. department. So there's a few small rocks we can lift and try to find either economies in, uh, sorry, savings in either um, reduced spending or greater utility. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, that's really the challenge in the next couple of years is how do we continue to balance the budget in, this, in the face of um, expenses that are growing faster than our, our revenues. Right, right. Well, and then it's, it's a big challenge, and, and it'll be interesting to see how the Board of Selectmen tackles that. I know you mentioned when we had our conversation a week or two ago about some opportunities that are coming up and that you didn't want to talk about then, and so I'm not going to press you on them now, but, but uh, we look forward to seeing what, uh, what uh, some of our leaders have been talking about and thinking about. Um, you know, when we, we were looking at the election, we are looking at voter turnout uh, today also, you know, a little concerning about low voter turnout. What was the turnout. final number? I didn't catch the... Last I heard was about 12%, which for a local election is okay. Um, you know, it would be nice if we could double that, <laughs> you know, in a local election for 25. Yeah, that would be great, I think. But it, It's really a little scary, I think. I know it's a local election, but we, we had our conversation in the last, uh, uh, con last meeting here in, at RCTV. One of the greatest um, gifts of this great American experiment is the ability to exchange power from one generation to the next. 
and how it's done through the election process. Sure. On, the, on the federal scale, it's done with a lot of money and a lot of advertising and a lot of turnout. These are the leaders and the citizens that will decide on spending, will decide on um, school committee and school priorities. Um, and the only qualification I think you need to serve in town government is a good heart, the heart of a servant, a willingness to spend the time, and most of all, good listening skills. Mm -hmm. um, it was mentioned earlier about openings in uh, uh, town meeting. Um, there are many other boards, committees, and commissions that citizens can participate in, be they cultural, be they historic, be they social. Um, and there's no shortage of opportunity if you have an interest to find a home where those skills, those abilities can, uh, can come into bloom and, and you can find uh, an, an opportunity to, to give back in some other way. Um, for those interested in running for town government, it, it, it is real work and it's real time to understand each week the issues that are to be dealt with. Um, but you get a great sense of having given back. And I, I, you know, I'm sure there'll come a time when I look back fondly at this. It's a ton of work right now, but uh, sure. you feel like you're getting something out of it, and I hope the town sees something out of it as well. Yeah, I mean, everyone I've talked to who's been in your position or sat in that chair has talked about the rewards of serving at the end. And so I thank you for your service. I thank you for running and presumably winning tonight. And uh, thank you for coming on with us and sharing some of your thoughts on election night here. Um, we uh, are going to take it now, and uh, we're going to toss it over to Katie, who is speaking with our state senator, Jason Lewis. Thank you, Kevin. I'm here with Senator Jason Lewis. Happy Election Day. Good to see you, Katie, and uh, good to be with you on election night. Thank you for being with us tonight. It's, it's my pleasure. Can you speak to the importance of local government here in Massachusetts? Um, absolutely critical. Um, you know, that's where the rubber meets the road. Um, local government delivers you know, services that we all depend on for, um, for our quality of life. You know, good schools, um, safe communities, um, support for our seniors. Uh, library services, uh, clearing the roads of uh, snow, <laughs> snow, thank goodness yes. that's behind <laughs> us, and uh, DPW did, did such a good job. So all of, so many of the essential services that, uh, you know, uh, we all, in many cases, take for granted um, sure. are delivered by uh, local government. And, uh, you know, we're very lucky to have um, folks here in, in Reading that are willing to step forward and run for, for public office, uh, whether that's for the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, Planning Board, Conservation Commission. You know, these are most people don't understand, don't realize these are all volunteer positions. Absolutely, they are just giving of their own, generously of their own time and effort on behalf of the community. And how does the Senate's office uh, take a role in local elections in Massachusetts, or does it? So, for me as the state senator, um, I work closely with the as part of the legislative delegation, which includes Representative Jones and Dwyer. Mm -hmm. And our job is to advocate on behalf of the town when it comes to um, state resources and state programs and services. So we. Uh, we need to work closely with whoever the Board of Selectmen members are or the school committee or um, other, other local officials. So generally, um, I try to not get too directly involved uh, in, in local elections okay. um, because, um, you know, again, I have to be in a position where I can work equally well with whoever is serving on, on, on these different uh, local boards. Sure. <clears throat> Uh, moving in a slightly different direction, what are some of the challenges that are currently facing mm -hmm. your district and Reading in particular, and how is how are you going about uh, working on those in the Senate? Um, it, you know, some of the, the big ones that are in front of us, I think, um, certainly fu uh, funding for um, for the budget, sure. um, and that's not unique to Reading. That's everywhere. Trying to make sure we can continue to have enough funding to have good, really good quality schools with growing enrollment and support all the municipal services as well. And that's a partnership between the town and, and its residents and the funding that comes mostly from property taxes as well as the funding you know, that the state provides in local aid. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's a challenge and we work together on that. Um, transportation, um, we're all aware yes. of the challenges around uh, you know, our roads and our bridges and the MBTA, you know, so important to Reading that we have Very good public yeah. transit. We saw unfortunately that what the breakdown that occurred this winter we know we have our work cut out, cut out for us there to um, really take steps to improve the MBTA and our infrastructure in general. So um, I'd say that's another, another important uh, um, you know, priority for us. Sure. 
Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, and I just want to say, you know, thank you uh, to all the candidates who um, who ran in this election. Um, we appreciate the, their uh, commitment to public service. Thank you. All right, Kevin, I'm going to throw it back to you at the anchor desk. Thank you, Katie, and thank you, Senator Lewis, for being here with us tonight. I'm pleased to be joined with one of our other uh, representatives in Boston, Representative Jim Dwyer, who Jim, represents Reading and a couple much. of other Good towns. To be on here tonight. You represent right. a couple of the towns as well. Uh, I used to uh, represent uh, one precinct in Stoneham okay. and five out of the seven wards in Woburn and three out of the eight precincts <laughs> in Reading. But the uh, we, redistricting, uh, sure. when they come up with the census every 10 years, they do a redistricting. So I gave up one precinct in Stoneham and right. I added another precinct in Reading. So I have four precincts and Brad Jones has four precincts. Okay, well it's great to have you here tonight oh, on you. election night and we're always very thank excited very that when you have the opportunity to drop by. Yeah. And uh, there was actually something exciting that happened in the State House this week, which was the legislature passed the Reading Home Rule Charter. I um, knew which, you were going to ask me that, Kevin. <laughs> How did I know that was Well, true? we're voting on that in Reading today, right. but the legislature, assuming it passes today, the, red, the legislature has already approved that. Right, it, it came in the form of a home rule like anything else would be put on the ballot. And, it kind of uh, allows the community to change the charter, and it needs a state approval, essentially. Sure, sure. And it came in, and uh, Brad and I had met with the local officials on the uh, on the home rule, and uh, which will essentially codify the, the the charter the way it was. Right. Make, okay. Bring everything into compliance. Sure, sure. So uh, we met with committee chairs in there relative to uh, to the home rule uh, charter, and was approved by the uh, House of Representatives, and then. Senator Lewis did a great job on the uh, Senate side, and <laughs> bang, we got it back here uh, right. to... Uh, and he said the Senate made a couple of changes. That's correct. And, and then, so you guys had to vote on it again in that's the House correct. of Representatives. That's correct. And uh, it went through, and, uh, you know, these are the, these are the enjoyable things. Uh, sure. Not, uh, some of them aren't as easy as this one was. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, this one went pretty good and uh, came back here, and it was the right thing to do. By well, the I know time. we certainly appreciate your efforts on our behalf well, thank down you. there in Boston on that and on other things as well. But isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? It is what we're supposed to be doing. And I'd like to ask you a little bit about that because since you are our representative to the State House, you know, what are you working on this term for to help the people of Reading and, and the rest of your? Or, uh, well, it, it's like any, anything else. I, I, I think my main my main goal is to make sure that Reading gets its bang for its buck from the <laughs> okay. you know taxes that the good people of Reading pay for. Sure. And like any other community, I mean, uh, I think folks don't mind paying for paying taxes, but they want to make sure they're getting their bang for buck from the taxes and they're going mm -hmm. in the proper spots. Mm -hmm. So any money that we can get back uh, to our communities to sure. you know to benefit the uh, quality of life, education. Uh, fix up our roads and repairs, and especially think, after the winter we've had. <laughs> oh well, Governor Baker, as you know, uh, yeah. you know, was uh, two hundred million dollars came back to cities and right. towns, which was a little bit unexpected. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, to not, and that that's outside the the uh, Chapter ninety money. Right, right. And folks will know what Chapter ninety money. Is. That's bridges and roads and sure. infrastructure, so to speak. Chapter seventy money is education. So right. this was above and beyond. Uh, what uh, Bob Lasher and the board of select were expecting. So they had smiles in their face, as I did. And I, yeah. I commend the governor for, for doing the right thing, so to speak, and sure. freeing up that money to come back. Any other important legislation coming down the uh, pike here that we should be aware of? Boy, I there was 5,000 bills that were filed. Uh, that's amazing. And, and currently, <laughs> it is amazing when you think about it. I mean, right. and, and, uh, I'm not saying infinitesimal, but uh, a very sh uh, small amount of that actually get to a floor right. for a vote, you right. know. But, but you still uh, got to read it all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing, you know, and it depends on what committees. It was just been dispersed out to the committee. So right. now is the time that everybody is, it's, it's, it's really a daunting task. Sure. So, uh, for example, today I was in uh, two different uh, committee hearings, one on revenue and uh, one on public safety. Yeah. So hearing the preliminary bills on that coming through the committee. And, you know, at some point in time, obviously, we will be ma making committee votes on what bills sure. that we feel as though sure. should be getting to the floor for a vote. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their own piece of pie yeah. and their own bills they file. And, and, and the things that they care about and are of, passionate about. Of course, about. of yeah. course. And, you know, you ask me, I'm very passionate about uh, folks with developmental disabilities. Okay. I was a member of New Path for many years in Woburn, very mm -hmm. involved with EMAC right here sure. on the street. Yeah. And uh, try to do the best we can to, I think, programs that uh, benefit uh, 
uh, folks with developmental disabilities and their families, I think us all too often, they're the ones that come in, they have no vo right. vo voice in Beacon Hill. Sure. They have no lobbyists, yeah. they have no unions. Yeah. They're the ones that uh, all too often, I think, uh, are taking advantage and mm. have a little cut. But they've done very well under Governor Patrick the last couple of years. I'm yeah. hoping the same thing's going to be done with Governor Baker. So. Uh, you know, we have some bills in there that want to make sure those, sure. those programs keep going. Sure. So uh, that's a little bit of what my passion is. Yeah, well, that's, that's good to hear. Well, today is our local election here in mm -hmm. Reading, obviously. And uh, maybe you could just speak for a minute about kind of why you feel local elections are important. Well, being a, uh, you know, being a, uh, an alderman in Woburn, mm -hmm. uh, equivalent to a selectman here in Reading, I, sure. I can tell I think I think that these folks that run for selectmen, have, a, have more of a difficult job in a lot of ways than we as state representatives and state senators. In some ways, they're a little more accountable to the individual voters. It's where the yeah. rubber hits the road. Yeah. And they're, they're having coffee in the coffee shops. And right. I experienced that in Woburn. It sure. came to a point in time where sometimes you were, you know, if it was a hot button issue in town, uh, you know, it was sometimes you'd rather have a cup of co <laughs> coffee in Burlington than a yeah, Reading, right. so to speak, you know. But, but no, it, it, I mean, it's, it's the greatest form of democracy you can have. Yeah. And I'm not saying this because I represent Reading, but I can honestly tell you my experiences. And I was a juvenile probation officer here for many, many years. I don't yeah. know if you know that. Uh, with the Middlesex Juvenile Probation, I was actually the hands-on juvenile PO here for okay. almost five years. Okay. All right. and, uh, I, I didn't remember, know that. Yeah, so. I remember Jimmy Cormier when he was a juvenile All officer. Right. That's, that's <laughs> quite a long time ago. <laughs> that's a while ago, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but... Um, you know, my experience with the the, uh, the government officials here has been nothing but excellent. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a great board of selectmen right now. And when I came on board, they had Ben. Ben was on, uh, and sure. uh, Jim bon, uh, James Bonazzoli, yeah. and, and uh, Steve Goldie, oh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, Camille. Yep. And uh, you know, I just found uh, Peter Heckenbucker was the town manager at the time. They made my job a lot easier. Right. You know, I had experience with uh, running before I came here, naturally, as being the juvenile probation officer and working with Joe Finnegan, who mm -hmm. was the principal well, at Reading principal High School, school yeah. and the police departments. And Pat O'Brien was the uh, juvenile officer when I was right. kind of, before I got the chief's job in Middlesex County. So I knew a little bit about Reading. I knew a little more about the schools and sure. some of the difficulties we're having in town, yeah. uh, yeah. unfortunately, with substance abuse and, right. you know, that, that terrible scourge. But uh, when I got elected, I, I was just uh, very, uh, not surprised, but uh, relieved mm. that, uh, you know, th those folks are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here tonight and sharing okay. in our election coverage. We've been uh, talking with Representative Jim Dwyer, who represents Reading and several other places. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, yeah, Portland, Maine. <laughs> anyway, we thank you for being here and thank you for your work in Boston. And uh, I'm sure if you had a comment or question for him, you could reach him in his office or, yep, absolutely. or, or uh, you know, any of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We are headed now to a break here uh, on our election coverage. You're watching RCTV. Gift idea with a special name or date Gift quickly becomes a, a treasured keepsake. KDA Custom Embroidery can add that distinctive touch to anything from bags to baby items, wedding and shower gifts, holiday to corporate. We will make your gift stand out from the crowd. Choose from many fonts, colors, and designs, or bring in your own ideas. We are happy to work with you, or choose from the many gift ideas we carry. The Chocolate Truffle is the ultimate chocolate shop, featuring CV Stuffer peanut butter cups, bars and pizzas, signature truffles, hand-dipped chocolates, corporate gifts, custom logos, gift baskets, and special occasion chocolate favors made locally in small batches. We ship nationally and deliver locally. The Chocolate Truffle is the affordable luxury. My name is Jesse Downing and I've been a town meeting member for four years. 
Good evening. My name is Bill Brown. I've been a town meeting member for 46 years. We may not always agree on the issues, but we do agree how important it is to serve the town in town meeting. So please consider running for town meeting because it is your town. Be involved. Join town meeting. Okay, well, we are back here with our live coverage of the election here in Reading, the local election on April 7th, 2015. My name is Kevin Vent. I'm here with Katie Robertson. We've had a lot of guests, a lot of candidates in tonight uh, who have been running. Some of those who uh, think they may have won based on the numbers that we've seen. Some of those who have been gracious that, that maybe they didn't quite make the mark this time. We've had some uh, members of our congressional, or not our congressional delegation, but our delegation down at, with the state legislature in Boston. And uh, we're just waiting on those final numbers coming in from those last two precincts. The counting is complete, yes. from what I understand, of the hand-counted uh, ballots. And we're just waiting to get those numbers. Our crack staff is putting those together, and we're getting them up on the air pretty soon. But just to do a little bit of recapping, uh, we did have several contested races tonight, including the one-year seat for the Board of Selectmen, also the one-year seat for the school committee. That's correct. Uh, those those seats, uh, both for one year, the selectmen candidates were Barry Berman and David Turniello, and for the school committee we had Nancy Doctor, Stephen Zessis, and Julie Joyce. So we have numbers for six out of eight of the precincts in both of those races, and we're waiting on precincts two and eight. And it was really great that actually all uh, five of those candidates have been here tonight. Yes, and, and it was have, lovely uh, them shared to, with us during come. election night, and that's been excellent. So we are getting ready. We have some numbers here for the one-year seat for school committee. Precinct three uh, is up on the screen right now. Nancy Doctor has 32 votes. Julianne Joyce has 97 votes. And Stephen Zessis, 70 votes. In Precinct 2, uh, for the ballot question charter, we switched a little bit. We have no response yet for Precinct 2, which is one of the, the, the precincts that has to be hand counted. So. Right. For those of you who haven't been with us for the last three hours, <laughs> uh, we had, we had uh, two uh, precincts where the automatic ballot machines were broken and or, or, or broke down today. And so we uh, have had to hand count all of those ballots. And that's, I understand that process has, has pretty much wrapped Completed, up now. Yes. And we're just waiting to get those numbers in. While we are here, are some numbers on the uh, charter. We've been talking about the Reading Home World Charter all night and, and how this uh, is a change that looks like, based on what we've seen, unless there's some dramatic differences in mm. precincts two and eight, it looks like this is probably going to pass. Of course, these numbers are unofficial until tomorrow morning, but it looks like the uh, Reading Charter is probably going to pass unless something dramatic happens with precincts two and uh, eight. The, Here we have some numbers for the school committee as well. Yeah, the school committee is a, is a closely contested race, actually. In precinct one, Nancy Doctor has 106 votes, Julianne Joyce 81, and Stephen Zessis 97. Precinct two, again, we're waiting on the, uh, the hand counting, which we think is completed by now. So we'll get those numbers as soon as we can get them. And Precinct 3, we have a Nancy Doctor with 32 votes, Julianne Joyce with 97 votes, and Stephen Zessis with 70 votes. In Precinct 4, Nancy Doctor has 51 votes, Julianne Joyce 137, and Stephen Zessis 133. Again, it's, it's probably the most contested race that we've yeah. seen tonight. By the way, good job, Precinct 4, getting out there and voting. Lots of voters <laughs> out there in Precinct 4. Precinct 5, we have Nancy Doctor with 42 votes, Julianne Joyce with 96 votes, Stephen Zessis with 70 votes. And then in Precinct 6, Nancy Doctor 45, Julianne Joyce 64, and Stephen Zessis 60, another very close race. Precinct 7, Nancy Doctor 67, Julianne Joyce 86, and Stephen Zessa 71. And those are uh, all the numbers that we have right now. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more numbers for you in a few minutes. Yeah, so those, you those, can see here in the field house is pretty empty now. So she, she, She's using her computer, so this is, this is good, <laughs> a good sign. Yes, uh, it's been yeah, a quite a day for technology. Quite a day for technology, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Those, uh, those school committee races in particular, you know, it seems to be a very close one. And, mm. and, and um, uh, when we had both Steve Zessis and Julie and Joyce, and they were both very cautious 
cautiously optimistic because they just don't know. And it's really, we really actually do need those last two precincts yes. to find out how that race is going to go. Several precincts, they were only a couple votes apart. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Doctor, probably, based on what we've seen, unless something dramatic happens on those other two precincts, uh, probably is not going to win. She was here tonight, was very gracious in conceding that. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Anything could that still happen here. So we are going to go uh, to break one more time and hopefully have some numbers when we return. You are watching election coverage here on RCTV. to Militia Simplicity, Amanda Trokakis. On the menu today, we have Roman-style lamb with artichokes, barley pilaf, and thick and creamy yogurt-filled crepes. So let's get started. This is my first production, and uh, we like doing it. We really do. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. I enjoy the creativity because it's an artistic presentation and we get to have good food and share it with the community. I love the, the people here, uh, getting the camaraderie about the, the editing and the taping and it's great. It's wonderful. I definitely would encourage others to get involved. It's a, it's a great experience. The, the staff and, and everyone here has really been very supportive. For more information about RCTV, visit us on the web at www.rctv.org. We are Troop 65124, and you're watching RCTV, a rainbow! RCTV Studios offers quality summer programs for kids and teens. These programs are ideal for the budding actors and actresses of the world, as well as the future directors, sound engineers, and more. Students receive training on the most up-to-date studio equipment around, from high-definition cameras, chroma key, and Final Cut Pro, just to name a few. Workshops are available for kids and teens ages 10 to 17, and range from stop-motion animation, to music videos, TV production, and filmmaking. For more information, visit www.rctv.org. Okay, we are back here once again waiting for those final numbers as we look towards uh, the end of election 2015. Yes. <laughs> And uh, we're just waiting to see what's going to happen with those a couple of numbers. As we mentioned, the voter turnout was somewhat light. About we're get, we've heard about 12 percent or so. Uh, there still were several thousand votes cast here in running today, and uh, we do have especially you know probably four or five hundred votes from those two precincts that we're waiting for uh, because of the broken machines and they right. had to hand count those. And it was mm -hmm. kind of a complex process about how they hand counted those things. Yes, well it seems like six out of eight precincts had correct computer, computing <laughs> devices to use today. Uh, and then the other two precincts, precincts two and eight, had to use a hand counting system where they used a reader, a counter, and an observer who uh, carefully went through each of those ballots to make sure that every vote in precincts two and eight was counted. And then they also had a police officer stand by just to ensure fairness and make sure that everything uh, went according to plan. Right, we had a, uh, several contested races. We also had a ballot question for the uh, changing, potentially changing the Reading Home Rule Charter. And when we saw those numbers earlier from the six reporting precincts, it seemed like there was pretty much an overwhelming yay on that. So so hopefully uh, it looks like that, that we will be operating under a new Home Rule Charter coming yes, up here. Yes, unless uh, something very unexpected yeah. happens in precincts two and eight, then it does seem like the charter will be Yeah, passing. it seems like pretty much unless everybody in precinct two and eight <laughs> voted against it, um, then it seems like it's likely that that's, that's going to be the case. And so uh, we're, we're getting ready here just to take a look at a few of the numbers that we have as we were just talking about the ballot question number one. Uh, just some numbers here that we want to see. I don't think we need to read them all off again. Yeah, we've done it a couple times. We are waiting it, yeah. for Precinct 2. But as you look at these numbers and scrolling through, I mean, you're seeing, you know, in Precinct 3 here, more than 100 votes over. And again, almost 200, 200 votes yeah. more here in Precinct 4. By the way, as I mentioned before, Precinct 4, get out the vote today. Good <laughs> yeah. job. You know, 130-ish or so here more for Precinct 5. So, I mean, you know, it, it seems as though unless something dramatic happens in Precinct 2 and Precinct 8, that, uh, that, that this is going to pass. Um, and so I think that that's really, uh, you know, um, something that makes the 
the, uh, the people who served on that charter review committee feel pretty good, actually. So the school committee was a, uh, a tightly contested race, or a more tightly contested race. Um, as you can see from some of the numbers coming up here, uh, Julia Joyce and Steven Zessis are, are close in many of the, in many of the precincts. So um, they're only separated by four votes. So uh, that, that's probably the most contested of the races that we've seen today. Sure. So I think we're going to, you and I are going to take a break. We're going to leave mm -hmm. these numbers scrolling for a few minutes. And uh, hopefully we'll get those numbers from those missing precincts. And so enjoy watching the numbers and we'll be back here in just a moment. Okay, well, welcome back here to coverage of the election on RCTV. My name is Kevin Bent. I'm here with Dave Robertson, and we are bringing you all the numbers of all the elections that are going on today in Reading, most specifically the school committee and the selection phrase, as well as the ballot question, which I'll be bringing to the uh, One of the things that we highlighted a little while ago, Katie, was that the no one ran for, for assessor. Correct. Um, right, uh, right, so we actually had uh, someone on who ran a wedding campaign. Yes, uh, Stephen Cook is the only writing campaign that we know of. Um, uh, as he noted that nobody had pulled papers for the assessor seat, which is currently an elected position, he decided to run a, a writing campaign for that seat to uh, ensure that somebody was sitting in that seat that was aware of the issues dealing with, uh, with uh, that position. Um, now, if the charter passes, which is the numbers we've seen uh, indicate that it will, that position will be appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Steve Cook, uh, if he's elected, will resign from that position and, and the will be appointed. Right, so uh, it really allows for the process that, that the electorate apparently, hopefully, um, has voted for with the, uh, with the uh, charter. Um, it really allows that process to go, to go forward the way the people who have voted are for it, intend for it to happen. So so it's really just making sure that we don't have someone holding that seat who, who got elected with one or two votes because nobody else heard anybody in. So I thought it, you know, it was a kind of a kind of a, uh, a real communal thing, community thing for, for Mr. Kirk to do there uh, to uh, kind of uh, make sure that that seat doesn't uh, happen that way. And it, it, yeah. it's, it's nice because, you know, we don't even think about the Board of Assessors. And obviously, a lot of people don't because they're working <laughs> for it. Nobody pulled paper for it, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it, they do kind of ensure that our tax, our property taxes are being handled correctly, or at least are being assessed correctly, that our property is being assessed correctly. And, and these are our citizens, you know, our neighbors who are making sure that our taxes are being done correctly for our property taxes. And so it is kind of important because it, you know, it's actually something that we know. So uh, we have been waiting here for the final precincts to come in as we uh, have talked about numerous times yeah. that the uh, <laughs> number two and number eight precincts had a problem with the ballot boxes. 
And so we have been waiting for them to hand count the ballots. And as we see here from our live feed, oh, looks like someone's stealing the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the policemen were That's there for. The <laughs> no, the ballots, we understand, have been counted. We're just waiting to get those numbers from the, uh, from the uh, field house. But they, they have been counted. And uh, it's been a long night for those people down there, as it has been for us. And we're just waiting for these last couple minutes to get these last numbers for the Board of Selectmen, for the, for the school committee, and for the, uh, the ballot question. Yes, and there, the numbers we have right now, we'd like to stress again, are unofficial. Um, but there were several uncontested seats today that, uh, that we think that you can probably say uh, have, been, uh, have been passed. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, moderator's seat was uncontested today. Um, there were a library trustee seat that was uncontested today. Um, so uh, MLD. the RMLD, yes. Um, so we'd like to say congratulations, uh, tentative congratulations to those uh, those candidates. As well as three years, a three-year seat on the Board of Selectmen. Uh, John Molina ran for that seat, uh, and he was here tonight. And uh, so we offer our tentative congratulations <laughs> to him for winning that seat for another three years. We also had the uh, two three-year seats on the school committee with uh, Gary Nye and and Elaine Webb, and again, we offer our kind of congratulations to them as they ran uncontested. <laughs> well, as we see here from our live shot from the uh, field house, there is nobody there. <laughs> it is so, empty. <laughs> so, except for that one guy and our camera And operator. our camera, yeah. So uh, we, we do expect to get those numbers in momentarily, um, and uh, we will uh, be uh, showing those to you as we have them, but we do know is that uh, it has been a, a fairly close race both for the one-year seat for selectmen and certainly for the one-year seat for school committee tonight as we've seen the other precincts you know those have been pretty close and so we're, we are just waiting to get those last things the ballot question based on what we've seen thus far seems to have passed yes um, now we, again that's unofficial but based on the numbers that we've seen that seems to have passed unless something really dramatic happens with those final two precincts uh, that's going to be the way that is going to come across um, you know, as we were talking with Phil uh, Rushworth, who's the executive director of RCTV, we were talking a little bit about the production of tonight's uh, um, uh, little, uh, little coverage here. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting to hear him talk about, you know, kind of how we manage when something unexpected happens. Yeah. Right? Like having the and, and, and all of that. Yeah, and uh, this is a big shoot. It's a nine-camera shoot, as you said. So, uh, you know, you and I got the the notification that the chance that the ballot boxes had broken at 3 o'clock and um, knew that it was going to be a bit of a, a bit of a longer haul than we anticipated based on the uh, hand counting of the votes. Um, but we would like to thank all of the people down at the field house who spent their time today working for Reading and working to get us the, the numbers that the people of Reading have voted on. And uh, so they've done a great job and, and that was uh, fantastic work on their part. For, for getting those ballots counted and working all day today, really. Yeah, I mean, we um, think it's a, kind of a long couple of hours for us. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, some of those, those uh, uh, workers that were down there have been there since polls opened and they were the clock this morning. And they've been there all day. And, uh, and because they had to hand count some of those ballots, they had to stay longer than they typically would have. Uh, typically, they'd be down at the clock. But then we saw, as we saw in our live footage, there were several of them there right up until 10 o'clock uh, counting ballots. And, yep. And so it's been a long day for them, but we do appreciate their service. As we said before, uh, they do get paid, but you know it's not a, not a whole lot. It's, it, you know they do it for the public service, of course, and, that, and that's why they're there. Here we have someone taking down the uh, taking down <laughs> the on those numbers. Uh, the numbers are the numbers. The numbers are leaving. And, uh, we're taking down there. All right. So yeah, we will uh, uh, have some of those numbers momentarily in terms of those last two precincts, and we'll be able to unofficially uh, call some of these races again, as Katie pointed out a minute ago that. Uh, the uh, town clerk certifies these numbers tomorrow morning, but these are how they have been reported. So let's go ahead and take a look at the ballot question one more time as we see precinct one numbers. We have yes, 213 votes and no, 75 votes. Uh, for precinct two, we're going to wait a few more minutes. Uh, and then for precinct three, we have 166 yes, no, 41. Precinct four, 258 to 47. And affirmative. And Precinct 5 in the affirmative, 179 to 47. Precinct 6 comes in at 135 to 44, according to favor of the ballot question. Precinct 7 is 167 to 54, again in the affirmative. And then we'll wait a few more minutes for Precinct 8. 
Uh, for the school committee, for the one year, we have totals. For Nancy Doctor, we have 464 votes. Julianne Joyce, 695 votes. Steven Zessis comes in second at 588 votes. So really only a difference there, of just over 100 votes there. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll the have the breakdown here. We have, we have the breakdowns coming in. So, so unofficially, I think we can offer our congratulations to uh, Julianne Joyce for winning that seat. We know that uh, you know, those are well-earned votes. Mm -hmm. Here we have finally some precinct two numbers. We see <laughs> Nancy Doctor actually took precinct two. <laughs> um, and so that does the 64 votes there. And uh, Julianne Joyce with 58 votes and, votes and Steven Zess with 45. So uh, that's kind of a little different look. Uh, you, yeah, it's different from what the totals different look different like anyway. Different from what anyway. the totals look like before. So it's, it's fun to kind of see some of these numbers coming through. Uh, as we see the rest of the precincts rolling through here for the school committee one, uh, one year seat, you can see that it really was kind of close. Uh, between Julianne Joyce and Steve Zessis in several precincts, but uh, and the total was only uh, about 100 votes off. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, unofficially here, according to the numbers that we have, uh, as we continue to scroll through, we have precinct five and precinct six, and then we're, we're waiting to see what happened with precinct eight come up in just a second here. And so this will be the first time we've seen numbers from precinct eight this week. And there we go, Nancy Doctor with 57. Julianne Joyce with 76 and Steve Zessis with 42. So in a lot of ways, of those 100 votes, 30 of them are right here. <laughs> um, that separated Julianne Joyce and Steve Zessis in the, in the balloting. This is the first time I think we're going to see some precinct two numbers also for the board of selectmen. We'll see if that comes up. Yes, there for we go. precinct two. Gary Barry Berman, Berman with 102 and, uh, and uh, David Treniello 77. So um, again, we're waiting for precinct eight for the first time. But we'll see what happens here. And it was great for all of these candidates to come here to RCTV tonight to uh, to give some uh, thank you speeches. Which was I really absolutely great. am always very impressed when, when those who have not won uh, are able to come down and be very gracious and, and uh, very congratulatory to those who have won and, and, and very civil and all that. And it really speaks highly of the quality of candidate that we get in general in Reading. So here we have David Traniello actually won <laughs> precinct eight um, <laughs> um, against Barry Berman. So that's I think that is the only precinct. I believe so, up, yeah. Um, in, in this election, so it's good to see there though. So we have the totals here for the board of selectmen. We have for Barry Berman 1,070 votes, and David Traniello we have seven, 759 votes. So really, I mean, very interesting. We're looking at only about. 1,800 yeah. votes um, for board of selectmen, which is, is kind of, well, disappointing, to be honest with you, a little bit, you know, you have to wonder. But, uh, you know, unofficial congratulations to Barry Berman on, on that. Well, I think we are uh, just about ready with those uh, numbers here to uh, to call it a night. I certainly am ready. Yeah, I think I am, too. <laughs> All right, well, that's good. Uh, we do uh, thank everybody who has uh, patiently waited with us and watched this we do congratulate all of the candidates, of course, for our well-run campaign. And we congratulate uh, especially those who have won those seats, and we look forward to seeing you represent us in the various places and look forward to uh, what can be done here in the town of Reading. Uh, we thank you for watching. We thank the crew of RCTV and, uh, and uh, everybody that uh, participated tonight for helping to make a fantastic and fun broadcast. Katie, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Kevin. This was a great, great first experience on live TV for me. <laughs> <laughs> first time on live TV. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I always enjoy it, and it's really a lot of fun. My name is Kevin Vent. This is Katie Robertson. We are going to sign off now. Thank you for watching RCTV's election coverage, and uh, we'll see you next year. Have a great night.